Hey, hey there, Twitch chat. How's it going? Be yourself. Dedolence. Chunt. Allegonian. Nasty track. Infrared Eclipse. Lefesto MD. Pete Douglas. And all my lovely lurkers. How y'all doing? I'm definitely in a spire mood today. Ready to uh, slam some cards. Have a time. Mercury with the 25 months on a Friday, no less. Thank you, thank you. Let's go on large zo. Do I think there are breakpoints in streaking for when I step up how seriously I take each run? I think it might depend on each streak, but uh, yeah, I think there are. And we're, we've definitely passed the breakpoint where I want to take this streak a bit more seriously. Especially with so many of the early runs being comparatively easy thanks to powerful rare relics or the Runic Pyramid. I'm not expecting to be handed more of the same to continue the streak. So I need to make sure my wits are sharp enough um, and my decisions solid enough to get further forward with a, a bit of a weaker deck. Are there any days where I f wake up and feel like the last thing I want to do is play Spire? There are days like that. Usually on those days I don't play Spire. Um, that's why I originally created the tradition on Saturdays of uh, no Spire streams for last year. Um, and we've done some Spire Saturdays this year. I'll probably continue to do some. But if I'm not playing Spire, there's probably some reason for it on any given day. Happy Friday, Just Blank. Hey there, Dr. Noodles. So. Ironclad number seven. How do we do today? Remove a card, random potions, curse for choose a rare, or the starting relic for the boss swap. We are fighting Hexaghost. Good, I was looking for an excuse to boss swap here. I might do that. Ever thought of going, uh, playing, I'm having a revenge day and going back to previous seeds that I lost? I don't like replaying Slay the Spire seeds too, too much. Uh, a, a very small difference in decisions can have sort of reverberating impacts on a run, such that uh, you end up with a completely different run sometimes, very quickly. Just uh, taking a different path, for example, can mean seeing different card rewards or seeing different um, events, maybe? <clears throat> or events, uh, different events in future acts, at minimum. And that can really change how the, the run plays out. So I think I'm going to go boss swap here. And the reasons for this are as follows. One, I'm starting to like Ironclad boss swap into Hexago specifically, because you need less health in Act 1 to deal with this boss. And then by the time you get into Act 2, you'll have two boss relics. Um... And the other reason is that this pa this Act 1 is flexible. We can dive headlong into challenge if we wish here. And tackle a couple of elites, including the Burning Elite. Uh, or we don't have to fight any elites at all. Um, actually, wait. Uh, no, that's not true. We have to fight this elite, this elite, this elite, this elite, this one, or this one. But only have to fight one. And we can delay until after the treasure chest for the first elite, if we really need to. So here's our sort of panic out route. All this to say, I think this is a better than normal boss swap situation. I would prefer maybe a random rare relic or 250 gold as an option. I would probably take choose a rare for a different downside here. 99 gold or 7 max health, but not for a curse. So I'm going to boss swap here. This loses the Burning Blood and gives us a random boss relic. This has a small chance to go pretty badly for us. Um, but on average, I think, makes your run quite a bit stronger. We end up with Ectoplasm, which is not uh, anyone's favorite boss relic, I don't think. 
but is perfectly fine here. It's going to give us four energy. It's a boss relic that does not have a front-loaded downside, but it does have a downside, but it's not a front-loaded downside. That's important. We're only going to lose all of the gold that we would gain from this point. So as of floor one, we're up one energy and down exactly nothing, which means that our short term is going to look really good and we're already very well favored to get out of act one. So don't worry here. Making up for all of the money in the entire run is an extra boss relic. And quite frankly, that's probably a pretty good trade. Let me catch up with chat here for a moment. <clears throat> How's it going, Erroneous? Is it typical to have a, to abuse some sort of mechanic on each character for consistency at higher ascension? For Clad, it seems like you have to abuse exhaust or you have no chance. I think Ironclad in particular is about abusing something. It's kind of is the whole character is find something broken and break it. Um, it doesn't have to be exhaust. We've seen lots of successful runs piggyback off of feed, scaling your max health. Uh, often combined with a card like Reaper to gain the health back. Um, you can also break the game with Snekowai. That's going to be something you abuse. But yeah, you're you're pretty much always kind of breaking the game, at least on Clad. Silent and especially Watcher feel like they can win games of incremental advantage a lot more reliably. In fact, I'd say very specifically for Watcher, you don't have to abuse or break the game. You just have to use your strong um, base output and combine that with Watcher's consistency tools to have a small, refined, solid enough deck of cards. And Silent can do something very similar with a footwork, a noxious fumes, and a caltrop, so you can just carefully chip down every enemy, but never really overwhelmingly kill anything. Would I change Ectoplasm in any way? I would change Ectoplasm, I think, to say <clears throat> you no longer gain gold from combat rewards. That way you could still gain gold from relics that give you gold um, and events that give you gold, which is kind of the real bummer about Ectoplasm is that a decent chunk of the events in the game and a small portion of the relics in the game no longer do anything because they interact with gold. Confused. I know you hate Ecto as a boss reward, but I seem happy to have it here. Yeah, because um, because I, I think it's perfectly winnable here. And Ironclad does have a lot of uses for more energy. And my chief concern at, the, at uh, every Ironclad Act 1 is getting out of that Act 1. So I'm, I'm pretty okay with Ecto as a swap. It's, it's definitely not my favorite, but I like it more than, I think, Cursed Key. And I like it more than... Busted crown for sure. Good luck on the exam for Red Eclipse. But how much my, would my win rate improve if I allowed myself to save scum? Quite a bit. At least 10%, I think. But probably potentially a little bit more than that. There's all sorts of shenanigans we could pull. For example, I could save Scum to get the optimal line through each combat. Assuming I'm trying to abuse this as much as possible. Um, we're going to get favorable outcomes from events all the time, so I can get whatever I want from matching keep, no consequence. I always win the bet in Act 2. Um, what else does Save and Quit work on? Not a whole lot else, actually, in terms of events. Um, but anytime we have to do like a 50-50 in terms of predicting what an enemy is going to do on the following turn, you know, playing a strike versus defend, can you be greedy in this fight, can you not be greedy, Save Scum can answer all of those and allow you to take whatever the better line is each time. The Face Trader, that's another one. But if, if I'm only retaking when I would die in a fight, then it's going to be a much smaller percentage. It's, it might change some uh, heart combats or maybe like unlucky Repto fights or Gremlin, Gremlin Leader fights especially. Um, collector fights too. But by and large, most of, the, uh, most of the other deaths wouldn't be preventable in that case. But it would still be a solid couple percentage points for sure. Anyway, I'm going to talk about this run that we're on right now. 
Will I ever go this side? That's a pretty reasonable way to go. I'd rather take out the Burning Elite if possible. And with four energy and an upgrade, I bet we can. Okay, yeah, let's start uh, hereabouts. I like four combats, four... Um, four chances at a potion, four art rewards, all good stuff. Lousy. I think in most fights we'll expect to lose not too many hit points, as having four energy allows Ironclad to have consistently higher output with, uh, with his hands. Here, for example, we do get to kill them both. Without the Burning Blood, I'm a little hesitant little bit hesitant to take a Hemokinesis, which trades two health each time we play it. I think I'd rather have a Headbutt here. <clears throat> yeah, being able to recur our first two-cost card, whatever that might be, could make a big difference, too. First event of the run is a money shrine. Of course it is. You ignore the shrine. But we don't want to take too many events this run. Not a great opening hand. Please draw defend next turn. Thank you. Bummer. All right, we're getting clipped in the opening combats due to our draws here. Nothing we can do about it. Just happens sometimes. He's a shame. There's a good two-cost card. Uppercut. Great headbutt target, too. Perfect early add when you've got four energy. And T-Star, thanks for the prime sub. Saying this sub goes out to this run. Good luck. Thanks. Here we go. Uppercut doing some actual work. Also, the draw order doing some actual work. Good for us. Let's try to take zero on the jawworm fight. So far, so good. Let's give me a kill next turn and everything's fine. Just need one more attack. Although there's only two draws. Good. We can do bash, uppercut. All right. So we got... Hit by the other fights, but Jawworm went perfectly. That's not how it usually goes. Still no potion, unfortunately. Does make the upcoming fights a little scary. Like a Twin Strike, a Shrug, or a Heavy Blade. Given that we have four energy, I really like adding a little bit of block to the deck. And a little bit of card draw to the deck. It's a good headbutt target. It works well with headbutt, because you can headbutt something, then shrug into it. I like it. Let's take that shrug. Should make the next uh, combat a little bit easier. Definitely going to take a couple more combats here. Our ambition is to take that Burning Elite, but we're going to need potions for it. At least one. At least one good one. Defend Bash, I assume. Yeah, it's got to be. for 12. Keep the Vuln going. Looks like we want to try to split it next turn with our damage, so let's just double defend here. We hit it as hard as we can with 4 energy. Not hard enough. There's 4 slimed in the draw pile. Do I want to headbutt anything? I could headbutt defend even. How much health will they have? To commit. Uh, we do 18... 31. So they'll only have 11 health. Maybe seems better to headbutt a strike then. Two strikes kills one. I'm okay with this outcome. Ultimately, we get through our hard pull fight with only three damage taken. Zerk Clash Flex. Also, we still didn't get a potion. Spooky. 
Um, if I don't get a potion from this combat, I might have to bail out of the Burning Elite. We'll see. Aaron W. says, In general, is decision-making in reward screens more important than in-combat decision-making? No. No, they are both very important. And uh, messing up either will tank your run very quickly. I don't spend as much time talking about the in-combat decisions usually, but they are very important. But I think they're the, sort of the two halves of the Spire game that you have to put together to be capable at it. You have to be able to, to know which cards to play in which order, and you need to be able to know which cards to take. And you need to know who, which enemy to target if there's more than one. That's also a sort of knowledge check. I think we're skipping those. We are definitely upgrading our uppercut here for one more week in Vuln. That will make either a Lagavulin or Grumlinob fight a lot more manageable. If only we get a potion. Please send me a potion. Let's see if I uppercut a headbutt, we'll deal 13 plus 13. That will kill you. I can strike the cultist and uppercut will be on top. That's perfect. Don't want to waste my energy playing defense here. At least it feels like a waste. And that should cleanly kill. Four energy rocks in Act 1. These harder fights are no problem. Get a Sneko Oil. Finally a potion. That's certainly good enough. And perhaps Flame Barrier is also good enough. Hey there, Jofer. Grants on beating the A19 heart. Well done. Yeah, I really like Flame Barrier as a headbutt target. We're fighting Hexagos later. It's also pretty good with the Sneko Oil. Josh Man, thanks for the prime sub in the nine months of sub port. Okay, I think we usually win this Burning Elite fight. We're quite good against Legavulin. We're just fine against Sentries. Knob is probably our worst matchup, but hopefully the Sneko Oil makes that easier, as we can Sneko Oil to draw Bash or Uppercut turn one or something like that. Legavulin with extra Metella size. I'm not afraid of this. This is not bad. This will be a fight where the Uppercut and the Flame Barrier put in tremendous work together. And I really like Bash Uppercut as an open, although I don't like this hand very much. Maybe just Bash? Probably just Bash. Okay, headbutting the Shrug is just fine. We may or may not use the Snickle Whale during this fight. I haven't decided yet. Next turn, I can ba uh, Flame Barrier Bash. That's kind of cool. I want to push damage in this fight. Uh, I, I think over defending is going to be a losing recipe here. So let's trade. Of course, here we do want to play the Flame Barrier. Flame Barrier Bash for sure. Some flame barrier damage. We're gonna get debuffed in a moment. That's not the draw. Is this the Sneko Oil moment? I think it might be. Yeah, I think this is the time. This fight's about to get a lot harder, and we're only halfway through. Let's do it. Excellent. We got one cost uppercut, zero cost headbutt, zero cost flame barrier. Good. Very good. Some other stuff is high cost, but then this this is more than makes up for it. Uh, I think I want to headbutt the flame barrier. Although I could headbutt uh, uppercut and do shrug uppercut again. It's kind of fun. A lot more damage, too, actually. Let's do that. Yeah, it's better than playing one of these stinky strikes. Punch. Okay, 
Okay, we can't kill with Bash Strike Strike, can we? That's gonna mean taking 12 here, unfortunately. Should we wait? No, we can! It's perfect lethal! Easy game. Okay, that went really well. Thank you, Sneka Oil, for bailing us out. Get a very stinky relic, the Bottled Flame. Quite sad, but I guess I'll take it. We can bottle our uh, uppercut, if nothing else. And then Gremlin Knob's pretty easy with Bottled Uppercut. That's also really good for Hexaghost for the turn two week. Yeah, that's just fine. I'd prefer a uh, quote-unquote real relic, but it'll do. It will give us consistency, I guess. And here's hopefully a quote real relic. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. There's three or four runs now with this thing's crazy early. It is certainly a real relic. Helix or Pyramid Streak continues. Love it. All right, well, that should make things somewhat easier moving forward. Uh, especially if we get a good boss relic, this is going to turn juicy. Twenty streak of getting one specific rare relic. I mean, it could happen. I, I wouldn't be overly surprised if that is how a Spire Records ends up getting um, made at some point. Is one player with an extraordinary streak of just really good starts. Flame Barrier is so good. Ooh, and uh, good times keep coming. turn could be weird, though. We've got the shrug, and we can headbutt defend to make it a guaranteed full block. Let's do that. We should be out of here. One strike, one uppercut. Or three strikes, one more strike. Three strikes, one more strike. Cool. We only took two damage to sentries. We pick up Nunchaku. Gain one energy for every 10 attacks played. Between the Ectoplasm and the Nunchaku, we have pretty good energy generation so far. And I was going to say that we probably want a non-energy boss relic, because I have nothing to spend all this energy on. But now I do. Whirlwind. Whirlwind is really nice the more energy you have. And I think with four base energy, potentially five energy, five energy plus next act, Whirlwind is amazing here. It's true that we can never get Chemical X, but that's not that big of a deal when the Whirlwind will just blap everything anyway. Yeah, being able to take out birds is pretty sweet. There's definitely some other utilities as well. This is interesting. Um, if I uppercut Strike Strike, can I kill that louse? I'm pretty sure I can. And then we're just fighting the Jawworm. One on one with four energy, that should go well. And you take nine, nine, you're dead. Four energy and some. I would like... Uppercut, I guess. Set up uh, Pendant as much as... Or uh, Nunchaku, rather, as much as possible there. Do we try to get to a store node to spend our money before it gets stolen? Yeah, we might as well go here, right? Actually, yeah. Instead of an event, then we can remove a card or something. Although it would be nice to know if we're getting a Pandora's box. It's about 50-50 that we encounter the two thieves early in Act 2. And yes, they'll take money from us. So it's probably better to just go to this. So we get a guaranteed remove or something. Seems quite reasonable. Praise the Helix. Praise it. Definitely going to upgrade that Whirlwind. Now it's 32 damage played on full energy to all enemies. 
which is a lot. We can that one, I guess. Good job, Buffer. JHTM, thanks for 41 months. That is a lot of months. There we go, a real potion. And a disarm going into Hexaghost. You better believe I'll take disarm, causing the enemy to lose two strength permanently. All right, shop. What you got? On sale uh, rare card? On sale Dark Embrace. And there was Chemical X, too. Dark Embrace, you say? Well, I am a certified Dark Embrace enjoyer. Big time. And I could even afford to shrug it off alongside if I want a bonus shrug. JHTM, thanks for gifting us up to Storm of the Seas. Welcome back to the Cozy Sub Club Storm. Could also buy a potion. I've got two potions, though. What do we need a strength potion for? You afraid of Hexaghost? I'm not. I'm not even a little bit afraid of Hexaghost. We have four energy, we'll do just fine. Give me that shrug. Yeah, and a flame barrier. Um, do we upgrade flame barrier or disarm is my question. Caramel Corn, thanks for the prime sub. Do I ever do silent runs? Used to play rotating, where we change characters every win, but now I'm looking for the individual character streaks. Um, so I'm playing one character at a time. We'll be focusing on silence after Ironclad, um, which will happen either after I achieve my goal or sometime around April if I decide to move on. Phenomenon, thanks for the gifted sub as well. Barrier is relevant in a lot more fights than Disarm. I agree, which is why I like the upgrade on that. The potential bonus damage is nice, too. But I shouldn't need more than minus two in this fight, I don't think. Or for the uh, next act fights. Hello? All of my cards? No? Okay. Not today, apparently. Not today. Getting multi attack next turn. Just headbutt uppercut, then I can do uppercut, disarm, flame barrier. That would mean skipping bash. But I can play dark embrace that way. Let's do that. Think about nunchaku here. Okay. We're actually going to be a little behind on damage here. It's all right. We do have the energy potion to go with Whirlwind or something else. We can also just survive the Inferno pretty easily. Careful, though. This is a good time to deal 24 with this energy pot. I'm going to do it. Okay. We have weak for Inferno and minus two strength, so we should never die to that. Good to get the burns out of the way here. It's still a pretty bad turn overall. Hmm. Only three by six. Oh yeah, worst possible hand. We're not dead though, even with the worst possible hand. Yikes. Janet, thanks for the four years. You have been here for year four years and years. You sure have. 
effectively lost to Hexagos because of draw order. We certainly we could have with a few less hit points here. Classic uh, speed pot. Doing what it does best. Nothing. And I believe we have a kill in this hand, right? Yeah, we're out of here. Whew. Definitely a spookier Hexagos fight than anticipated, as we're one turn slow there, but uh, we made it through. And we have two potions. And we can have a bludgeon, a berserk, or a limit break. I guess that's a pretty good bludgeon. Just do more. You don't have any strength to limit break with. I definitely don't want a berserk. But yeah, let's take a bludgeon, I guess. This is not the rare card we wanted here. Would prefer a demon form or a corruption. Definitely a corruption. Or an offering would be fine. Or barricade is actually pretty decent with these cards. But when we get a Sneko in a second... Nah. We don't get a Sneko. We do, however, get the awesome thing to counteract Ectoplasm, which is Pandora's Box here. Pandora's Box says, upon pickup, transform all your strike and defense, which is, I think, the weak point of Ectoplasm. With no money, we can afford no card removes, and that usually means you're stuck with the strikes and defends doing uh, not much. But if you transform them into something else, well... It's pretty likely to work out, and I've won quite a few Ecto plus Pandora's box runs, so I'm quite happy to see this thing here. What do you got for me? That said, this could go badly. We're not guaranteed to get good cards. We could get triple Wild Strike, triple Clash, and we could cry, but uh, probably not. No, we don't. We get uh, we do get Berserk though, for all the Berserk lovers. We also get Shrug It Off, Ghostly Armor, Sentinel. Pretty good block overall. We did get four block cards. Brutality is iffy. Carnage is fine. Sever Soul is actually secretly awesome here. Um, Don't love the other stuff, but we don't have to play these cards. That said, removing these cards is not likely to happen. So... I hope we can make good use of them. What an act layout, huh? Hmm. I don't know if I can handle this path. It's the path I want to take. Seems crazy, though. Can you only get orange pellets from the shop? That is correct. It's a shop relic. So it will only appear in shops. The idea of doing something like this. Don't really want to go to shops that we know will be completely wasted nodes. So I'd rather just take more combats, although I'm a little worried that our health will get whittled down. Can we actually survive these five floors? I'm not sure. We should be quite good at the fights of Act 2 with this whirlwind, with our premium block options, but will the draw orders line up for that to work out? I don't know. Don't know. Far left is more reasonable slightly. We get a fire before the elite, so we can rest if we have to. But there is one wasted node. That part's not so great. There's also no three elite line. I'm going to trust in Helix here. Yeah. That's already looking pretty good. Is buffer gone if we get attacked for zero? No, it's not, thankfully. No, it is not. Do I dare play Berserk here? I think I do dare. I'm gonna dare. I'm <laughs> back down to 21. <laughs> Alright, tw 21. Oh yeah, that was a super reasonable there. Get the obliterated nerd. Bash bludgeon. So I can just hard cast that. 
Battle Trance. Here we go. Card draw. You'll love to see it. Red Mask Gang incoming. Uh, they'd have to show up here. I hope so, actually. Spirit Guardian. No thieves for us. Definitely going to Berserk here. I could do Bludgeon Uppercuts. That's kind of badass. Or Sever Soul if I want to do two more damage but not remove Artifact. Whatevs. You just buffer this hit. Which again lets me play the Brutality. Seems fine to me. So we draw seven on this turn. So I can headbutt, bludgeon, shrug it off, play bludgeon. Squish. Okay, so far the fights of Act 2 not so bad. We get a regen potion for a bit of healing here. And if we want, we can take a body slam plus, which is kind of awesome. So I will take it. Especially with our Dark Embrace, that could be very abusable. Here I was bad-mouthing this Berserk. Yeah, it's done wonders for us. Genuinely. Here it is again doing wonders for us. How long can I survive in this fight? Let's find out. Nice draw. Okay. That's not what I wanted. Dang. Uh, I guess we're playing Hemokinesis on one of them. It's better to do that than to just buffer a hit from them. That did not go well. Oh well. At least we got the regen potion. We got punished by the Berserk there. This turn looks fine. I do want to make sure we get the rest of the regeneration here. Or as much of it as we can. I don't know if we can block 19 here. No. Okay, that's not too bad. With the Dark Embrace especially, I will take another Disarm here. Very good against Book of Stabbing, too. Although I worry a little bit about our Bronze Automaton fight eventually coming up. Bird nerd, huh? The Dark Embrace, I think we kill the Cultist first here. How dare you. Might hurt. 31! Great. Just what my day needed. Get smashed in the face. Alright, well, this Elite is starting to look a little bit scarier. Who saw that coming? Now draw some cards. Okay, and then a much more reasonable number, 6 by 2. Why are you like this, Chosen? Why has it got to be this way? Okay, as long as we can avoid excessive... Interesting. Bloodletting plus... I don't think I have enough health to do that. Or enough card draw to want it. 
It's fun, though. Uh, third disarm, also, I think, too much with uh, some of the fights upcoming. It's not that helpful. I think I owe the chat a dad joke. That sounds very likely. Sounds very likely. Did you hear about the Ironclad who started up a casino where you gamble on blood sports? It's the world's first foray into blood betting. No refunds, not even if you liked it. So we're taking six here, whether we like it or not. Whether we like it or not. Yeah, three disarms looking a little bit better now, but that's how it is. Once again, our draw order not that cooperative. Two six ain't too bad so far. If we can make that all of it, then we're good. Yeah, we're good. Just get on out of there. We got a block potion, so in a way, we healed six from that fight if you squint really, really hard. Do I want another unupgraded uppercut? Not exactly. I don't think so. So with 32 health and two potions, do we face the first elite? I'd say we're in reasonable shape here. I would have preferred closer to 50 health, but uh, I think we almost always win this fight. And it is indeed Book of Stabbing first. Because of course it is. My buffer. I guess I could attack pot. I'm also going to get an energy I can't use here. Annoying. The only attack that actually blocks is Iron Wave, and that would be kind of a mediocre attack pot anyway. And yeah, if we're not if we're not uh, block potting, we should use the Brutality here. We could use the Block Potion to save the buffer. Might only get us an extra 7 or so health next turn. But if we could save it for the turn three big attack, that would be preferred. I think we just let it go. And headbutt um, Shrug. Shrug or Uppercut? Now let's headbutt Uppercut. Make sure that this thing stays weak. Playing Hemo, I don't think is worth it. Well, actually it might be. It does give us a wound though. That wound could be bad. But dealing 22 more up front does seem really good in this fight, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Disarm Flame Barrier. Next turn we can block just fine. I'll play the uppercut this way. I'm okay with that, though. You could argue that we can Berserk here. I think that's actually reasonable. Because I can use the extra damage next turn will be accounted for by playing one more block. We don't take any extra damage this turn. And then we don't draw the um, Berserk again. I think that's worth it. Although 33 is a big number. That's right, you're also not weakened. We do get a heck of a body slam. Go disarm sentinel body slam. That seems most reasonable here. Although I don't like not playing Dark Embrace very much. Yeah, we full block. No prob. And we have five energy. Your attacks are much less scary now. Can I make you die? Let's see. 22... 24. I think Iron Wave Body Slam is more than 12, right? We would do 7 plus 7. It goes to 39. And we deal 
not quite enough. So we have to attack potion to kill if he wants to kill here. Or we can block pot. So I think I'm taking this elite on, probably not, but I would like the attack potion over block potion for this elite. So let's block potion. Let's block potion here. Which I believe gives us the kill immediately, courtesy of uh, Body Slam. That's kind of cool. How's it going, Cener? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Ninja Relic's cute. I do kind of like Reckless Charge with the Dark Embrace, but only a little bit. Only a little bit. This might give us the edge we need to beat um, Bronze Automaton here, which could be quite nice. I think I'm taking this. Though it is nice with the... Nunchaku as well. It means we're really optimistic about our draw order. I don't like that so much. Not feeling it. Get out of here, you stinky merchant man. What are you doing with all these tempting offers? Be gone. Don't yawn at me. So let's go upgrade. Open the chest. Probably rest. As far as upgrades go, I really like upgrading the Dark Embrace to make it more affordable. Upgrading Bludgeon for plus 10, probably worth it too. Let's upgrade Dark Embrace. Berserk a curious option too. Is it ever Berserk upgrade? Yeah, it might be. Certainly a lot more playable. Quite happy with the uh, boat thingy here. And I I like this elite a lot more if I rest, so let's do that. Having health for Bronze Automaton is not a bad idea either. I want a couple of events. Let's do it. First up, the snack. Seems pretty good. Or as fights go. Get no money and a burning pack plus, which is excellent card draw. Can also exhaust our sentinel or other cards that we don't want to see. Helps make our body slam far more effective. This is a great card. Really love to see that with a free upgrade. You know what? I will take another fight, actually. I want more card rewards. That's what I've learned. I want card rewards. Be vulnerable forever. It's fine. Probably. Maybe. This hand is not fine. That hand is very bad. Hmm. No way to fix that either. I guess we could play the Dark Embrace and the Disarm, but it's going to be tough. Can't apply Vuln this turn either. I failed to do so on turn one. That's a little iffy of a choice. Does seem like it just has to be Bludgeon Body Slam. Whirlwind for Nenshaku here. Churkin. Take no damage this turn, but next turn. A bit more questionable. Oh, but I can headbutt uh, card before I play Disarm, right? We can headbutt uh, Flame Barrier. Or Burning Pact, but preferably Flame Barrier. Minimize the damage here. This is actually free as well. OK, 
Okay, we full block this turn. We'll play Brutality, we get one more draw next turn, and we don't draw the Brutality again. It's like plus two draws, in a sense. And then we can Uppercut Bludgeon, we're out of here. That was a very smooth fight, actually. We get a Block Potion. And three cards that could have been good, but aren't. Let's just take the Elite. Don't think we take any of these without an upgrade. Maybe an Infernal Blade Plus. That line brought to you by the Dark Embrace upgrade. That's right. Worked out there. All right. Gremlin Leader. Yeah, this is not what you want to see on turn one of this fight. Not an easy way to dispatch the minions. That means we're going to drink the attack pot right now. And I'm perfectly happy with Carnage here. It does damage. 20 clean. What's the way to do this? Can I get them both? It has to be Carnage on the little one, Bash Uppercut on the angry one. I can't play Disarm here. Otherwise, I don't actually see a way to kill them both. Red Lap, thanks for the Prime sub and the 20 months of support. What did our Pandora's box contain? Here's the list. Nothing too, too powerful. Um, Berserk, Brutality, a bunch of stuff. Would an Uppercut Iron Wave kill the 22? No, that's only 13 plus 7. That's only 20 damage. We ever not touch one? That would be inviting an attack next turn, which I don't really love, but there is a possibility that that works out. This is where the save and quit we talked about earlier. This is where save and quit could make a huge difference. Not that we're going to do that. I'm going to kill these gremlins now. We get a point of strength, at least. And if we do get attacked, we have buffer. Actually, it would have been pretty good to get attacked. As we drew the whirlwind and all of our good block on this turn, that's not great. Guess I'll put Berserk in play. Here's hoping. Let's keep uh, Ghostly Armor around. It also adds damage to our Body Slam. Can't draw more. Don't want a Brutality as we still have Buffer down. Okay, good. We didn't get attacked by the leader this turn. That's the important bit. Once again, next turn looks like hot garbage. Since I better shrug. Conserver Soul Sentinel. There we go. Dark Embrace. Conserver Soul. Um, and I think I'm going to headbutt rather than playing Carnage here, because I want the Carnage to exhaust and give me a draw one. Next turn, the wizard won't be charged. We're most afraid of Gremlin Leader attacking us. So probably we take Flame Bearer. That's the top card. Flame Barrier looks good. Could attack, thankfully. Okay. Just hedging our bets. Can I go sufficiently ham on Grum Leader here? I think I can. Play Sever Soul, draw a ton of cards. Um, does this just kill next turn? I'm pretty sure this just kills next turn, right? This will be 48. More than that, actually. That's already a kill with just the bludgeon. Yeah, we win. Cool. Very cool fight. Get me out of here. Here it comes. Bonk. 
Ornamental fan is sweet, further encouraging us to spam attack cards. These cards are not so sweet. Um, I think we should just keep looking at more combats. We have plenty of health. We're doing well in fights, and there are more combo pieces we'd like to find, so... I think right now the best bet is to just keep looking at more cards. Surely that will work. Play the Berserk. Spin to win. Bludgeon to win. Buffer to win. Buffer the hemokinesis is kind of cool. Mediocrity. Yeah, so far, Buffer, uh, Berserk, rather, has impressed me. I'm considering upgrading this Berserk as our next upgrade, because it has been so consistently useful to have the one additional energy each turn. And it will make it much easier to put in play, especially with the Helix. So yeah, let's upgrade Berserk, I guess. I really don't like the anger there. Without any proper strength scaling... I don't think I like it much. Our goal in this fight is to preserve buffer until the hyper beam. We can hopefully do that with a block potion, but we'll see. Secondary goal, of course, get Dark Embrace in play and do some stuff with it. A little bit more block. No block, huh? So let's, uh, I'm gonna skill potion first here. There we go. Actually, maybe better to headbutt a block card and take the Burning Pact. Hmm. Oh yeah, two by eight is, I don't know why I miscalculated that. For some reason I thought we were too short here. No, we're not too short. Well, then I can definitely take Burning Pact. I'll do it. Try to do this without bludgeon. Dark Embrace is here. Remove the last artifact. That seems good. The front one is going to steal our Berserk. The second one will steal an uncommon card. Kind of funny. Oh, we get the Berserk in hand, actually. This will be a good turn to play Berserk. As the automaton is not attacking us, where only one of the nerds is attacking us. Perfect. Simply perfect. Maybe wanted to headbutt for more scaling. Disarm. They both have disarm. Okay. So this will be the hardest turn to block, of course. Forty incoming. No, wait, twenty-four plus sixteen. Yes, forty. I think we do it without any help here, thanks to Body Slam letting us kill one. 32, right? 24 plus 8? Yes. We just shrug into Body Slam. Fortunately, Body Slam's not quite enough to get this one, but we can kill this one. And then we're perfectly blocking. And now we have Buffer for Hyper Beam. Now we are good. Let's do Iron Wave Whirlwind, because I want to point his strength. Let's 
Uppercut you. Now we can play Brutality. Just want to draw into something I'm not going to play here. Uppercut, headbutt, body slam, whirlwind, I guess. Buddy, shrug it off for next turn. Should be pretty easy from here. With the disarms, it's kind of like it's uh, behind by a turn in the fight. Whereas we're ahead with the extra energy here. Toasty. We're also drawing basically the same cards every turn now, so there's pretty much nothing that can go wrong. Famous last words. Alright, we're out of here. GG. Yeah, that was a great fight. Pretty much perfect execution. I used the skill potion preemptively, but the burning pack helped quite a bit, so no complaints there. And we have two potions still. And we have either an impervious, a fiend fire, or a feed. That's actually a hard choice. Hmm. Impervious helps with our late game block. Lots of block all at once. Good with dark embrace. Good if we find corruption. Fiend Fire exhausts a bunch of cards in hand. That's kind of nice with Dark Embrace. Does a bunch of damage all at once, but burns the deck down. I'm not sure we have a deck to spare for Fiend Fire. Feed could scale our max health by letting us kill enemies with a feed. Dark Embrace should allow finding the feed for lethal most of the time. And although we're pretty late in the run, feed could still be 40 max health easy, even without an upgrade. So I do like the feed quite a bit. Maybe more than I like the impervious. I'm going to take feed. I think we can do it. As for boss relics, I'm not sure what we want here. We do have some Pretty good power already. If we want more card draw, Runic Cube is really interesting with our Brutality, as that would allow us to draw even more cards. Coffee Dripper is a little bit spooky because we don't have healing at all. And so to give up the ability to rest means we really have to do this with no heals whatsoever. Philosopher's Stone, a little bit less scary with Fossilized Helix. Definitely a bit less scary with two Disarms. Could still end up being relevant, but uh, most of the downside is negated by what we have. And this deck certainly would appreciate more energy. So you know what? I like the Philosopher's Stone over the Coffee Dripper. Not often I'm saying that. Let's, let's try it. This could backfire on us. Really, really hoping it won't. I could take quite a few elites in Act 4. Lots of elites is not a bad idea. So we would like to get some more relics. How are we against various elites? Nemesis could be a real problem. The others don't seem so bad. Although Giant Head we might struggle to kill in time. It would be nice if we had some proper scaling. This is currently what I'm thinking. I'm going to get one, two, three, four relics. I don't know if we can actually handle that, but we want to try it for sure. We can get off at basically any time, too. So let's start that way. First up, we have to get past the Dorklings. Stinky Dorklings. I want a Berserk. Sure do. Good. Battle Trance, please. Uh, 
Darth Malaku, thanks for the prime sub in the 15 months. Much love. Can block 28, but 28 won't cut it here. Some damage at least. Do we lose our buffer? One times five. And I get an energy back. Dark Embrace is the next card. Sounds like I want to do the nine by five. By attack pot, we could probably feed here. Unfortunately, Whirlwind feed won't kill. 45, uh, 56, this has 58. 9 by 5 is 45, 45 plus 11 is 56. Yeah, let's use the attack pot here. is here. The good late game power. I would love to find basically anything that adds statuses. I should have taken that reckless charge. I'm going to grab this because I think evolve is so good in the late game. Also helps us a lot against um, Nemesis, who could be a real problem. We have a Sever Soul too. Um, it also helps in this fight, which I'm going to bite. Fight these two nerds for a rare relic, although they are quite a tough fight. So don't underestimate them. I mean it. Don't mess with these two. We're, we're absolutely going to play feed here for 15 damage. Lest disaster occur. This is definitely getting played. Unless you're telling me Whirlwind kills. No, that's only 60, right? 12 times 5? That's never killing. It's a shame we didn't draw the Evolve yet. You're not going to be Vuln next turn. That is kind of spooky. Sounds like I'd better play the Whirlwind then. It's a good time for our block potion. Although, better time is when we have body slam in hand. Let's take some damage. Health is easy to come by, right? Son of a gun. This is fine now. We can do bludgeon, iron wave, flame barrier. That's fine. Take six more. Not worth playing the potion. Oops, wait. then we should be done. Okay, definitely a tough fight. I'm not 100% sure this will end up being worth it. But relics are relics. We get calipers. Calipers could be good here. Start of our turn, lose 15 block rather than all of it. That could be the beginning of something anyway. Especially if we can find an entrench, perhaps. Let's take at least one event here. Into fall, losing Hemokinesis, Evolve, or Ghostly. See you later, Hemokinesis. That's a good remove. And now for Single Orb Walker. Already fought your bigger friend. Could be a free fight, this one. Hopefully, we can feed on it. I actually remembered that I have feed. Good for me. Um, 
Maybe not the right choice. Bit foolish. I miscounted there. Um, just give me the burning pack then, I guess. Let's draw back to it. Easy enough. Cool. Blessing of the Forge. That could be an upgrade to our max health. I do like True Grit somewhat with the Dark Abrace. Is that enough? I'm not really convinced that is enough. It's going to be hard to want to upgrade that, but... Yes, I really need a second wind or something. I don't think I'm going to take this. Let's take one more event, which is the Merchant. That's not good. Should be taking more fights here. Hmm. Hopefully we don't fall apart in the late game here. It certainly could happen. Decent enough turn one in this fight. We even got enough block to retain some. Buffer saves us here. No problem. No problem. Actually, we full block, even better. We just need Evolve and the Disarms, there they are. <laughs> Destroy it all. We're one feel no pain or one second to wind away from really good things happening. Losing my buffer to this? Terrible. Definitely not good. Could use our block potion here. I don't really want to. Body slam would give energy. We don't play the body slam. Wait, uh, we can just full block, actually. We have Sentinel. Missed the Sentinel. Yeah, we're fine. We're not losing buffer at all. Everything is fine. Which is good, because I sure need this buffer right now. Hello? Sir? Sir, you're causing a scene. Okay, we can play Bash here if we want to. Vitality gives us a much better chance of feeding next turn. Uvu doll. Give us plus one strength. Yield no pain plus. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We have a thing. There's also, uh, was that a rupture plus? That's also kind of good with the brutality and all that. But the feel no pain plus is what will give us hopefully the late game advantage here. Between the calipers and the body slab, having a whole bunch of extra block is going to be a big deal. Yeah, I wouldn't call GG yet. Uh, there's definitely still things that could go awry in this run. We've got uh, 
Reptomancer to survive still. But the odds are looking good. Good enough that I might want to rest now. Rather than upgrading any of these cards. I would like to do that. Just gonna safety rest. We have the Blessing of the Forge if we need anything upgraded short term. First up, it's Giant Head. Cool. Dark Embrace, Berserk, Evolve. But any of this? Might as well headbutt the uppercut. We'll let Carnage go here. Obtain some block. That seems fine. Keeping buffer, I guess that's all that matters for the moment. I want to play three attacks. Can I do that? Only if I play feed, so... Either we get rid of feed... This is probably a good fight to let feed go, actually. We shouldn't be too greedy here. So yeah, let's play the feed. Just get rid of it. Silver Soul. Now I can play Uppercut, Whirlwind, Body Slam, Speed Trance. No second Body Slam, but that's alright. In a little bit, we still have Buffer here. We're doing just fine. Here we lose Buffer, I believe. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, that is fine. Through Giant Head with no damage, no potions used, we get a bag of marbles to apply vulnerable turn one. We get three bad attacks, unfortunately, but the deck is just fine at the moment. Jamat, thanks for the 25 months of support. Thank you, thank you. Gotta take the blue key over the Orichalcum here, although I do kind of enjoy Orichalcum in a situation like this. Get a Nemesis rematch. This time we lose buffer quickly. Unless I block pot. I think we're okay in this fight. They do have 70% potion chance, huh? Hmm. Mm. Alright. Yeah. Not particularly worth. It's all good. Might as well play this. This would be... Not very bad, actually. We can play this, too. Alright, time to deal some damage. Possibly also accumulate some block. The calipers seems like a reasonable choice, actually.
Okay, pretty good, pretty good. It's time to deal damage. Much as we can. Do I have stats on win percent after finding feed? I don't think that I do. Ooh, wow. Thinking our Iron Wave is actually doing a, quite a bit of work right now. That said, third disarm is also very good. I'm going to take third disarm in this situation. Burner is also very nice. Uh, three disarms is partially crucial to making first cycle of heart nice and smooth. If we early draw any disarm, then we can remove the strength from heart and ensure that fossilized helix is preserved for the big hits. Ten nib to double the damage of an attack is quite welcome. And winding halls offers us madnesses, which I don't Actually, wait. Infinite? Sometimes. I'm going to take those. We could maybe do a Shrug Madness thing as a win con. Which can definitely be powerful. The idea is you make two zero cost shrug it off and then greatness ensues you also have to exhaust all the other cards in the deck but this deck can do that relatively easily make a zero cost carnage because I need help. Now what? Now I think it's buffer time. Although... If it wasn't... What if it totally wasn't? 39? We can block that. Easy Berserk every time. Next turn is uh, Incense Burner. Use Headbutt. I guess the Zero Cost Shrug. And Nib is also ready. Bonk. Actually, full blocking, unless I do this. Cool. This deck is awesome. I get mango fruit juice, hello? 19 max health and a second win. Okay, well, thank you for all of those things. That's really good. I like that. We juice in now. This forge pot might be actually very important, so I'm going to discard the other one. I'd like to have forge pot into heart with this deck. We have too many unupgraded cards where a small amount of upgrade could make a big difference. I have to recall here, unfortunately. Is there any reason not to drink this? I don't think so. Let's just use it now. I don't think so. Nice attack, nerd. Drawn cards. Good. Pretty sure that's good. That's 
good. No statuses here. Impervious would definitely be nice. We did skip it, Impervious. We did skip it, Impervious. Uh, I'd also like Incense Burner on a slightly higher number for Time Eater. That would also be nice. That said, this enemy does ramp up their damage pretty dang fast, so... Can't exactly mess around here. Yeah, that says it's feeding time. Second Dark Embrace or a Pummel Strike plus. Another good madness target. Feels to me like we want the second Dark Embrace. Just draw all of the cards forever. Could be a good time. Wish we didn't have to recall here. But we do. Alright, first up is Tim Eater. We have lots of disarms to make Time Eater less spooky. Question is, do we just get bonkered on turn one, though? We could full block by second winding both Dark Embraces. Don't think that's a good idea. That doesn't seem very smart. But if upgraded Dark Embrace was draw two, it would be even stupider as a card. Do we regen potion here? I don't think so. I think if we're going to regen potion, it should be in the next boss fight. After seeing how much we lose in this one, I don't think we ever lose 68 health to Time Eater. Especially not if I get double Dark Embrace down turn one. Even if I do have to then take six, which is fine. Let's just do that. Let's just take six, lose the buffer. Have double Dark Embrace. Make me regret losing Silver Soul. Carnage is free. That's pretty good. So I can do Ghostly Armor, Body Slam, Madness? then play whatever's made free. We've got a free shrug. Can't play this feel no pain, that's fine. I should have played Whirlwind, this is what I should have played for one strength. This is good though. We get Berserk down for free, we get all of our disarms down. I'm gonna put feel no pain in play here. And we're intangible next turn for this attack coming our way, so that's no problem either. Nice attack, nerd. Save on. Calipers wouldn't be good here. Poor Calipers. It's trying its best, but not working out so well.
Slimes would be more than welcome, actually, so please give me slimes. Second wind again. Now we shrug first at, at minimum here. Then body slam. Now we second wind. Body slam. Rug, body slam. Actually, wait, I want to eat you. Uh, don't body slam. Instead, the carnage. Now we can feed. And with a bonus of plus one on the incense burner to boot. Okay, so probably we get to keep this regen potion till next act. It's not like we're gonna buy a new one at the shop, right? So we'd, we'd rather use this in act four if we can. Which might let me upgrade something. In this fight, the primary thing we need to remember is that we have to end with the incense burner on four to make the shield and spear fight much less terrifying. Wow, I can force madness on Shrug here. I like that. Yeah, the incense burner setup is quite important, indeed. And I think I need to weaken the awakened one to keep our buffer this turn. Yeah, we do. No, don't play that. Play this. Play this. Make the Shrug free. There we go. Make sure these bird nerds die. We can eat one of them as well. Evolve and Berserk are, are going to go away because they make the Awakened One very angry. Do not wish to make our boss angry. And nib the Iron Wave for maximum power. Eleven by four. Except, is it though? I'm afraid of this fight. This is a good blessing of the forge moment. But like I said, I want this potion for heart. So I'd really prefer not to. Um, how am I doing this turn? We start by disarming twice. Being what we draw. Okay, that's whatever. Try to hurt a bit. Just feel no pain, but I don't think this is the right turn for feel no pain. But I guess I'll take 15. 15 is fine. Then we can eat you next turn. While we're intangible. Of course. I guess there's not much reason not to play that. I guess not. Although I don't have to play it now. I was kind of planning on using Second Wind here. Yeah, let's do that. Should give it a second wind. Eat this fool. Setting up our pen nib could be helpful for the upcoming elite fight as well, but I don't think it's going to be as important. Let's 
keep that scaling going. One strength per turn is enough for this fight. It's not enough for heart, not even close, but it's definitely enough for this fight. Kill next turn. Got rid of all the powers, I assume, but we can build up some block. It's not too bad. If I'm offered Bias Cog and Deep Fragment after the first battle, which would I take? I would take Bias Cognition every time. The card is just obscene. It's so much more focus, so much more quickly. Sure, you're losing one focus per turn, but in most fights, you can end the fight before that catches up to you. Oops. So that's usually my go-to strategy. Bang. Okay, now we gotta be careful. Watch the incense burner, watch the pendib. We want burner on four when we kill. Not this turn, but next turn. Shrug loop. That way we can kill with body slam with no consequence. GG. Okay, I think we have very good odds into Act 4 here. Got 118 max health. Quite a good array of relics. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be found throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? We deal 2352. Have I been here before? Why are we so poor? Well, we're so poor because we haven't earned a dollar our entire life. That's why. Missing 16 hit points. If we see an upgrade that matters, that's what the Blessing of the Forge is for. I'm going to keep both of these potions into the end game here. Can elites be harder than hearts sometimes? Definitely. Yeah, especially the elites that are right before the heart can absolutely be more tough than the heart for certain decks. I find Defect struggles to these two the most. Uh, their turn two is exceptionally deadly, but the incense burner makes things a lot safer if you set it up correctly. Or sometimes the shield attacks you on turn one, which is no bueno. So I'm getting get, going to get rid of Berserk here. I don't want to play it now, that's for sure. Oh god. Maybe I did. <laughs> hmm. Classic. Huh. All right, I'll just... End of the Whirlwind? We take 14 here. Which means I can use the regen potion. Yeah, but my face, though. Thankfully, we're immune to damage next turn. We don't want to use the regen this turn, because it would heal us at the end of the turn when we're still at full health. We want to use it next turn. Turning around does not help. Turning around makes this worse, actually. Yeah, I want to headbutt Burning Pact. And I think we want to try to kill Spire Shield first. Though that does sound difficult. The Sentinel this turn. 
Hmm. Excellent. This arm. Next turn looks bad. Shoot. Second wind at least gives us block for next turn. Let's take that. Definitely worried we're getting smacked here, though. Certainly looks like it. That's good. We block this hit in its entirety. We do take some damage, not too much. Get a lot of extra draws. I've had worse. Killing the shield first might have been optimistic. Well, your second wind at least. Get rid of three cards. Okay, looking a little better. Surely we do lots of damage this turn, right? In fact, we can go uppercut, body slam. Quite what I wanted. Uh, let's battle trance. Never a soul. Feed. Okay, that's better. Hmm. How hard do I want to gamble here? So my question is, what turn do we want Incense Burner to be on? You'd think normally three or four. However, our circumstances mean that might not be necessary. We have Helix to block the first big hit. And we have three Disarms that we're very likely to draw by at least turn two. If we play a disarm with the forge pot, we bring the multi-attack down to zero, guaranteeing we can buffer the big hit. That to me says we want incense then to be on turn five of the hard fight, the first attack of the second cycle. So setting it to zero or one on purpose. Would plan on breaking the helix. Uh, we have boat thing, though. We have 10 block for free on turn one. There are lines where we lose the buffer and completely brick. Like if all three disarms are on the bottom, for example. That could go badly. It's actually more of a pain to set up Burner to the quote-unquote wrong number here. Turn three burner is pretty good, actually. Because if it's multi-hit first, then we burner the big hit. And if it's big hit first, then we buffer the big hit, burner the multi-hit. Although that is most likely to result in burner being completely wasted. I think I set it to one. That's my nomination. Can I block for enough to actually do that? Great question. 
No. All right, four it is. <laughs> that answers that question. We're out of here. Good discussion. Any strength scaling? Yeah, oh well, I guess we'll just have turn two burner. That's probably fine. Good old Grumlin Horn. Good old Grumlin Horn. But yeah, this this draw. This draw means the heart does nothing. I don't want to upgrade in this deck. Potentially the madness is. Evolve. I want to upgrade Evolve. Calipers are okay here. With minus one strength and weaken. Is it going to be 1 by 15 or 0 by 15? Should be 1 by 15 if we're, if we're Vuln, actually. Yeah, it'll be 1 by 15. So we have to upgrade this Disarm. If we want the multi-hit to be 0. Because it'll be 1 times 0. 0.75 times 1.5, which is more than 1. Let's do it. No need to play Whirlwind. Keep 3 block. Right, Multi-hit first. So we do waste Burner. This was definitely not the right number for Burner. Food for thought. We have buffer for this. Uh, hmm. And my choices are or second wind. I guess I don't hate losing these cards. Let's do it. Dark embrace, go. Could have been Body Slam first. It's all good, though. We do buffer this very nasty hit. I think that's perfectly fine. Gonna headbutt the Shrug Plus for next turn. Can maybe Madness Flame Barrier next turn? That's not bad. I'd like to retain some block. Having the Madnesses in separate hands actually seems better. I get to keep three, though. I'm a little worried we're not fast enough. It's like feel no pain, uppercut, disarm. Go from there. Pretty good time to play Madness, right? Flame Barrier is the ideal hit. I'm okay if I hit Dark Embrace, I think. Nice. Lucked out. Okay, that's going to be a huge game changer for the rest of this fight. I'm also going to play this feed. Get rid of that. Thank you. Um, don't play both, just the body slam. Make not that much. Mm. 
going to disarm you now. First, headbot flame barrier. Well, the free flame barrier. I could make zero cost ghostly armor. I think I'm just going to let the ghostly armor go. We're intangible on the next attack turn. Okay, this is working out. We've gotten rid of Bludgeon there, I think. Play this. Block. Another turn to build up block. It's the multi-hit, too. All right, surely Madness now is correct. We hit any of these three cards, everything is good. The Shrug Minus is perfectly fine. And now what? Second wind? Uppercut second wind? And then we have only the remaining super cards. Make sure to play Body Slam first. I think we're there. Give me Flame Barrier, Shrug, Flame Barrier. Take 18 by 15 return damage. Please and thank you. Actually, wait. Make it... Uh, 24 by 15. Actually, wait. Make it 30 by 15. <laughs> Get toasted. And then one... Actually, I can't body slam now. We just have to ass turn, so to speak. GG, Mr. Hart. What a run. From the Ecto start to the Ecto finish. GG. GG. Mark the streak at seven. That was a great run. Brig Gold, thanks for the Prime sub in the 11 months. Thank you, thank you. Uh, nice waffles. Oh my god, it's Coco. GG. Without even one dollar. Well, we had two, I guess. Without even two dollars, we were able to bring it home. Not bad. GG. Uh, they call me Strider with a 13 months. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, what? Has it been done? The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. BG, a great run for number seven. Will the helix streak finally break? Or will we get another one? And a dad joke for the crowd. I got today. Sneaky Emily, thanks thanks for six months. And Yippie K Yay with the tier two in the eight months of subport. Was feed better than impervious in the end? Well, we went from 75 max health to 121 max health, but 19 of that wasn't due to feed. So from 75 to 
102. We got 27 max health, which was quite a bit. That helped a lot. That definitely helped a lot. Twitch chat, what is the Ironclad's favorite kind of cheese? Demon formage. That's what I got for you. <laughs> so what's the streak actually at? We are at seven as of now. We are at seven. We're going to be going for eight in a few minutes. However, first it is break time for me, Twitch chat. Got to refill the legs, stretch the water. When I return, there'll be some more Spire. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Bets are locked in for the next run. Will we make it all the way? With Ironclad number eight. Here's hoping. We're on a pretty good streak so far. It'd be a shame if anything happened to it. Hmm. Guardian is the act boss. There's only one three elite path, and it's really deadly with the burning elite first. Three random potions could make this more viable. Seems ambitious, though. Might prefer... Upgrade Bash as our start, and then... Something like this. Fire Elite. Chest Elite. Couple fires. Not the best act one in the world, but perfectly fine. Get a couple upgrades, get some relics. Save money for Act 2. I don't like a curse for Transform 2 very much. That could go very badly very quickly. Early Shop is not on a good path either. Boss Swap a little unreliable. There's no... Well, there is a path that doesn't fight any elites. It's not great though. J-Guy, happy Friday. Oh yeah, actually, it might be better to go um, this way, right? Because then we, we just have the same, but more option to opt into Murder Town. I'm going to upgrade Bash. I like Bash upgrade just fine. It's definitely a nice little advantage. Starting from floor one, first couple combats, definitely less threatening when you've got upgraded Bash turn one. Like Jaw Worm, for example, no brainer here. We certainly Bash the Worm. Then the rest of this fight should be comparatively smooth. So that we don't get bonked so much. Do get a decent potion. And some decent card options. Actually, with Guardian coming up, I like Metallicize more than ever. Shrug is perfectly good, too. I think I liked the last first floor metallicize we took. I'm going to grab one again. I think this is the time that this card is best, is in the very early game. Providing you a small amount of block every turn that isn't affected by frail. It does work out pretty well, actually. Can't quite kill. That's a bit of a bummer. Take three and kill next turn is fine. We're up to 70 health here. With one more easy pool fight. Pommel strike. You'd love to see it. Hey there, Panda Suit. Would I ever consider doing runs submitted by viewers where they failed or that were very difficult? Generally, no. I don't find that too interesting. Replaying seeds conceptually is, is kind of cool. But the runs diverge so quickly with a different path taken or a couple different rewards taken, such that it, it quickly ceases to even resemble the same Slay the Spire run, even rerunning on the same seed. And so it, it doesn't really feel like you're correcting something so much as you're just having a different experience entirely. Twenty-two to kill you. Bash Pummel does kill, takes six. Or block eight, still takes six, I guess, but then also have Metallicize in play, but then don't have a Louse dead. Eh. The block eight line. Take six, heal six, seems fine to me. Seventy health is pretty good for the first three fights. Battle Prance is pretty good. Pull stop. Zero cost, draw three. You love to see it.
Perma Pensive joining the illustrious list of channel cuties. All hail Twitch chat. We've got a newcomer to the list. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Let me get you added right away. You're on the list. And Scavito's sneaking a dad joke in there. How many cuties total? Way too many at this point. More than I can possibly count. 500 million cuties. All right, here's a dad joke. What is the ironclad put on in the morning? His battle pants. Mark C, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Ooh, a bonus upgrade. We can upgrade the metallicize or our draw, the battle trance or pummel strike. Early metallicize upgrade, actually better than you might think. I'm going to sneak that in here. One more block per turn. It's a lot. And Despot, good to see you. Thanks for 26 months, the double Baker's Dozen. This is a pretty good fight if we're hoping to face the Burning Elite. Although this turn could be better. We can just triple block. Only one of them had attacked on turn one. Somebody asked, did I play Bellatro? Yeah, we checked out Bellatro earlier this week. Didn't think too much of it. Do streamers prefer regular subs over Prime? Yes. There are a number of incentives that make the uh, regular sub a bit better. So I think I actually get more money from a regular sub at this point than I do from a prime sub. When, am I going to be playing backpack battles when it releases? I have no intention of that. Nineteen. Okay, not too bad. Uh, Amazon and Twitch recently updated the terms for Prime subs, actually. Uh, how it works now is that when you Prime sub, the streamer gets a monetary amount that is based on the country in which the viewer is Prime subbing from. And as you might expect, basically, the further away you are from North America, the less that amount is. Don 2 with the Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. There's a page somewhere with all that listed, by the way. I don't know it off the top of my head. I'll take an Iron Wave here. These other cards are bad. Mornings, thanks for the Prime sub. Are we okay for this Burning Elite? I'm hoping we are. Might not be, with only one potion. Sentries are relatively easy. Gremlin knob looks a bit tough. Gremlin knob's definitely tough. Root bear with the prime sub in the three months. Maybe I just go green here. I like the whiz. Thanks for the prime sub in the five months. Do viewers who don't provide money directly still help the channel? Yes. 
As long as you're here watching my content in any way, shape, or form, then you are helping the channel. You're upping my view count, you're giving me a follower count, you're just giving me views. All of that does help. As it helps kind of spread the word and bring others here who are perhaps themselves more inclined to directly support, such as... Um, How do I pronounce this? I'm just going to say Visky. Visky, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, folks. I think this goes well most of the time. I'm going to take it. This shouldn't be bad. We put our Metallicize in play. We get to open with Bash Plus. And I'm happy to use the Distilled Chaos if a opportune moment presents itself. We even have the interesting opportunity here where Upgraded Bash doesn't wake up Lagavulin. So I can actually wait one more turn here. Frankenstein 3D, thanks for the Prime sub, and what a uh, turn that was, too. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, Mr. Frankenstein. Okay, that's not a very good Distilled Chaos. Push damage here. This is probably the, the Distilled here. Yeah, there's only one block. Let's do it. Strike, Bash, Strike. Perfect. Iron Wave. Bumble Strike. Can I defend one time? I think I can get away with it. Gotta do 10 damage next turn. That's not hard. What a fight. That went really well. We beat the Burning Elite. We still have lots of health. We get a Relic that does something. Akabeko adds 8 damage to our first attack. We get a potion that does something, Liquid Memories. We get offered a Juggernaut early again. And I have an Iron Wave and a Metallic Eyes, so actually that's a really good Juggernaut. Anger is an easy add to the deck early on, but I really like this Juggernaut. How's it going, 63 Switch? Long time YouTube lurker, first time catching the stream? Well, great to have you. Yeah, Jug Talus Eyes is so good. Jugger Wave is also so good. Very good way to beat our act boss, the Guardian. And I can upgrade that Juggernaut to Juggernaut Plus right away, which is tempting. Although upgrading Iron Wave is also somewhat tempting. Let's go with the upgraded Juggernaut. I should want to evaluate a Juggernaut upgrade. <clears throat> Two more damage each time you block. So it's really up to the number of times you can block. Well, that's getting played. We can Liquid Memories Juggernaut if we want to. Realistically, I'll just Liquid Memories and attack here. Playing a bunch of attacks for Knob should be fine. I think we can get a three-turn kill pretty easily. At least I'm hopeful that we can. Thirty-three, three, three strikes is twenty-seven. We could Liquid Memories a strike. Is there any reason to use the Liquid Memories now? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Could have also maybe Liquid Memories to Juggernaut played the other thing. Looks like we're good, though. As you can see, we're just a little bit shy of a kill without the Liquid Memories, so... I'll happily use one potion to save 23 health here. Well worth it. We get a Molten Egg, a very early upgrade relic, upgrading all attacks we find, such as Reaper Plus or Bludgeon Plus. What the f Hello? <laughs> uh, um, I think that's a pretty easy Reaper for me. 
because we have Akabeko. So Reaper played with Akabeko does 13 damage to every enemy and heals us for 13 per enemy. That's already insane. Is this a skip? No way. You're crazy to skip these cards. Bazinga with a prime sub in the 16 months. Choo choo, everybody. Yeah, and with Feel No Pain, it'll proc Juggernaut. That's right. We're one Feel No Pain away from greatness. I might go for the third elite here. I think we're going to do it. Let's see what's in the chest. Ceramic Fish. Nine gold per card we add. This early on, I say this is worth it. Should be enough money by the end of the run to buy another relic, if nothing else. You're not Reaper. Boo. <laughs> oh well, heal 10 is better than blocking for 6, I guess. Still ow. Guess I play Bash? I guess so. Or I could play Juggernaut. It might be more damage, actually. It's a minimum 14. Arguably quite a bit more. Fire pot's pretty good. These cards seem like they're okay. We down for a Carnage Plus. That slaps pretty hard. I like Anger less against Guardian. Clothesline could be okay, too. I think I'd rather have a uh, Carnage, though. There's lots of damage, and if we don't play it, it just goes away. Shop is somewhat worth it, but I think I'd rather go to a shop next act, perhaps. Let's fight the Lagavulin again. This time. Personnel. This time we have Juggernaut. Which is pretty hype. Ooh, Metellus size. Reaper? Reaper only hits for five, actually. So, never mind. Iron Wave does more damage than Strike now that we have Juggernaut. Actually, so does Defend. Defend does more damage than Strike. I shouldn't have played Strike. My bad. Jugger Wave. Wave or not. Let's do Bash Defend here. Maybe we can get some health back here. Oh, yes. Seven health back. And then Juggernaut kills. Not bad. We have 42 health. We get a Juzu bracelet. Meaning we won't encounter regular fights in question mark rooms. We're offered some more upgraded attacks, although I can't say that I love these. Juzu would mean I could guarantee these are events, I guess. I'll take it. I usually prefer taking the relic versus not taking the relic. Um, this could help us find bites for Act 2, which would be really good, actually. Ceramic fish molten egg bites, very strong. Do I consider Thunderclap more with Champ Belt? A little bit. I don't usually consider Thunderclap. It's a little bit better with Reaper, too, but not really. Has there been a time where I didn't take Juzu besides for a blue key? If I had, for example, Feed. Better yet, Feed and Exhume. Um, then it might be better to take more combat so that I can gain more max health. Singing Bowl, or better yet, Singing Bowl and Prayer Wheel could also change math in that way.
I'd like my health back. Thank you. Double fire potion. That's pretty juicy. Upgraded heavy blade's kind of cool, but with a reaper in the deck, there's no way I don't take it in flame here to add damage to all of our attacks. But most importantly, the one that heals us. Let's take that in flame. And let's take a couple of events here. We could get a relic out of these. We could get... Money? Could get a remove? Dead Adventure would be my preference, for sure. We get the Wing Statue, which can either remove a card or give us money. I'm down to remove one Strike here. Strikes get out of this deck, although Molten Egg... I think still Strikes get out. If we find Bites, we'll find Bites. That's fine. <clears throat> and here... Lose health, find a relic. I'll click a few times. Ouch. Ouch. Two clicks for a Mercury Hourglass. At the end of our turn, deal three to all enemies. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Let's see. With Double Fire Potion, I'm not too worried about getting bashed by Guardian. We might take chip damage here or there, though. But overall, we should be pretty good in this fight. I think if I want this fight to be safe, I should upgrade probably Battle Trance. So that we can draw our cards very frequently. Yeah, the Metallicize will help a ton here. But I still think we want upgraded Battle Trance for this to be comfortable. Upgrading in Flame seems a little greedy. Hummel, we don't always get to play because of the curl up, so I'd rather upgrade the Battle Trance for card draw. But I consider this a high roll run so far. Slightly. Reaper Act 1 is pretty good. I wouldn't say these are high roll on Relics. Probably Molten Egg might be the best of them, but none of these are, are top tier. I do think there is a chance to lose to Guardian with the wrong draw order, but it's got to be pretty low. With the double fire pot. Just going to go bash Metallicize, because we never get hit next turn with these. Just want to get the Metallicize down. Carnage? Yeah. Don't play Reaper. Next turn, Juggernaut defend. Yeah, this is good fight. This is what we want. Yeah, this feels pretty safe. Although, next turn could really hurt, right? Like, these 8x2 turns could definitely be nasty. Likewise with next turn. If Battle Trance is the bottom card, this this will hurt. Next turn. So I wouldn't, wouldn't count Guardian out entirely here. We are going to lose health. Oh, wow. It did bottom deck. Okay. Ow. Um, defend Bash then? Or maybe defend Carnage? I think defend Bash. Ready to lose Carnage here. It's not that much health left. We go to 11. Or we could have transformed with Fire Potion, also an option. I'm not so worried about that. Yeah, we get in Flame Reaper. Good. 10 health back. We should always transform next turn, so next turn's fine. Good. The damage. GG. Keep both of our fire potions. And we get through. 
were offered Offering, Fiend Fire Plus, and Immolate Plus. My, my. Those are definitely potent. Immolate Plus in particular, very nice going into Act 2. Fiendfire Akabeko, also really spicy, especially with the Battle Trance Plus. Ooh, that is a tough call. And Fiendfire with Feel No Pain later on would become amazing, too. We're definitely going to go to a shop as soon as we can, although Act 2 may not allow it. I do love Offering, though. I'm going to take the Fiend Fire over the Immolate. But I like both of those options quite a bit. Fusion Hammer, Sozu, Empty Cage. Surely this is a reasonable Fusion Hammer. With the Molten Egg upgrading all of our attack cards anyway. Means we can no longer upgrade at Rest Sites. No upgrade on Dark Embrace if we find it, or Feel No Pain if we find it. No upgrade on Pommel Strike or Inflame, but still, I think, probably worth it to have that four energy per turn. We have two decent potions, but they're not decent for late game, only mid game, so I'd rather not take Sozu here. Let's take the Fusion Hammer. We'll get yet more eggs, I'm sure of it, they say. Options. Far left looks terrible. Very terrible. Could fight three elites, potentially. I like this progression. Option Optional fire is very nice. Then I can decide whether I need it or not with Fusion Hammer. That's quite good. Yeah, I like this shop over this shop. We get a little bit more gold beforehand, and we can decide whether we want the fire or not. Let's go to this shop, and we'll figure things out from here. Ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. <laughs> um, I think this is actually Reaper first, before Fiend Fire. We just have a full heal. This will still be 60 damage after the fact. So we deal 13 plus 60, 73. Plenty. Well, that's plenty. We leave this fight on full HP. Thank you, Reaper. We're offered Pommel Strike Plus, which I'm going to click on. Although Headbutt's not terrible either. More card draw, please. Baseball. It's juggernauted. Could save the Akabeko for specifically Fiend Fire. I don't think so. I'm just gonna play the Iron Wave here. And you're dead. Definitely liking the Fiend Fire so far. Dropkick, not terrible, but I think redundant. Unnecessary, even, with what we have going on. Time for a shop. With 455 gold, we're being offered Brimstone. Brimstone Reaper. Brimstone Heavy Blade Plus, plus Reaper. Tempting, actually. I am usually a fan of the Brimstone. Currently, we have no Disarm, which makes it a bit scary. Hmm. Who's our act boss? Collector, huh? Collector would be a lot easier with Brimstone. Kind of like question card here. If I can buy question card with Brimstone, I probably will. Kind of like that. That means no Heavy Blade, though. But I can just find another Heavy Blade Plus. Having the question card helps us find uh, the 
key survival pieces we're going to need for the late game. Disarm, Shockwave, Dark Embrace, that kind of stuff. So maybe we do that. Spooky taking Brimstone in this position. With the Reaper and the Fiend Fire, it's really good, though. Here goes. Here goes. So we're gaining two strength per turn. All of our enemies are gaining one strength per turn. We can definitely have downsides, as you can see. Die. We're going to be able to kill enemies very quickly now. Dual wield can make more Reapers, can make more powers to play, can make more cards in hand for Fiend Fire. This is very cool. With a free upgrade, I think I'll take this. Normally, I'm not a big fan of dual wield, but I see some very good possibilities here. An event? I guess so. Max health would be really nice here, that's for sure. Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right, do we need the fire? I don't think so. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna charge right into the Book of Stabbing with Brimstone, who is attacking us for 25 on turn one. Terrifying. Let's get my health back later. Eventually. Next turn's gonna be really scary. It's gonna be 10 by 4. Hopefully we can do 64 damage next turn. Well... With the Fire Pot, we can. Yeah, we can do Reaper's Strike, Fire Potion. We're out of here. That's pretty good. Juggernaut, go! Tungsten Rod. When we lose health, lose one less. Definitely good. Flame Barrier, Burning Pack, Shrug are all block options. I think Shrug with the Jug. Having our first targeted exhaust is pretty tempting, too. I'm gonna go Shrug, but I'm not 100% on that. Flame Barrier, uh, Burning Pack looked very good as well. I think I'm gonna hold out Hope for Reaper next turn. Or maybe Fiend Fire here. No such luck. Reaper will still be amazing when we get it, though. As long as we get it, yeah, soonish. We do Reaper Feed Fire. I like it. Blood Pot is healing. True Grit Plus. Here we go. Gain block, exhaust one card. Like that quite a lot as well. Targeted exhaust plus a decent block. Now we're really hoping we can find some exhaust synergy stuff. Feel no pain, dark embrace. That's what the question card is here to force. It's green, as they say. Could play Reaper, but it seems kind of like a waste. Kill the Parasite! I wanted to make more Reapers? Don't worry about it. Ow. 
Parasite dies. I'm going to Fiend Fire to kill it. That way I'm much more likely to draw the Reaper next turn. 50-50 odds here. Uh, and we can just wait one turn. Heal nine. Not too bad. Sure, double fire potion. Welcome back. All right, there it is. Feel no pain. Upgraded for free for no reason. Seems like a step in the right direction with the Juggernaut, Fiend Fire, True Grit sort of deal. Perfect. We'd like to have another one of these. Actually, maybe even two more in order for Brimstone Heart to not be so scary, but uh, we've got a long way to go yet. We're only on floor 25 out of 50. So this is looking good. Better. More strength below half health. Perfect for Reaper. And yes, fight another elite. Fight another elite. It's Slavers, who are in fact extra scary. Don't underestimate these fools. They will kill you. Don't mess with them. We can dual wield the feel no pain. Oh my goodness, you're right, Twitch chat. So that could make more feel no pains, although it's hardly a guarantee, right? Sometimes we also need to sacrifice the feel no pain for just a bigger fiend fire, for example. Carnage won't kill you. All bank gives us money every floor till we spend money at a shop. This deck is definitely going to want some weakness, and an uppercut is a perfectly fine way to get it when it comes with the free upgrade. Still have lots of health, so no need to go to the rest site. Let's take another fight, get another card reward, another chance at finding something like a feel no pain. <clears throat> I'm just going to block this. Mystic has to heal next turn. We get lots of health back with Reaper. We find. Could even dual wield this, but there's no need. Yeah, definitely liking this hammer. Or upgraded attacks, kind of cool. Headbutt is okay. Feels like unnecessary bloat, though. Shouldn't take too many attacks here, I don't think. We could take a clothesline to really lock in the weaken. I'd rather have a shockwave, though. Could take another iron wave. Don't really want to. Is Inflame even that useful? We picked it up before the Brimstone. With the Brimstone, it's not so good, but it still has some purpose. Juzu doesn't get credit for this, but uh, I'm happy we're here. We were knocked unconscious, meaning we can fight a Gremlin Knob and a Taskmaster to get 100 extra gold and two more relics, which will make a big impact in how well this run is doing. Big impact. I'm going to bash you. Well done, weakling. There's no rewards for the first fight, but if you take the second fight, oh boy, 
The rewards will be many. Many and big. Definitely want to target the Grumbling Knob first here. Very threatening enemy, of course, even in Act 2. 25, huh? be able to leave at full health here. Even get to keep our potions. And as you can see, we're cruising. This is usually what Brimstone does, is that you have a very easy Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, and then Act 4 comes along, and oh boy... But already things are looking up. Tori is awesome. Anything that is 5 or less... Attack damage gets knocked down to one. So we can potentially use this to reduce the initial damage of heart by quite a lot. Fiend fire, by the way. That said, that's only if the attack is five or less. So we have to reduce it before we can further reduce it. We're going to need a disarm or a, at least weaken. Or to block vulnerable. Otherwise, the heart could exceed five by 15 in the first attack cycle. And that would be very bad. Here it comes. I'm going to kill you now. Yeah, you're just going to die straight up. Turn two leader kill. Nice and easy. Oh yeah, and with the Tungsten Rod, that reduces it all the way down to zero. So with Tori Tungsten Rod, if the incoming attack says six, we take five. If the incoming attack is five, we take zero. That's how it works. I think one more Pummel Strike plus. Doesn't affect Beat of Death either, that's right. Snake plant, not so bad, right? Perfect snake plant fight with Brimstone. That's a good sign. Upgraded Evolve. It says plus on it. I'm just going to grab that. Hmm, that'll also help in the late game fights. Quite a bit. Why are all the cards upgraded? Well, I mean, Molten Egg is upgrading most of them, but... Uh, we can blame Question Card for the rest, I guess. Just offering us a lot of cards. But yeah, upgraded Feel No Pain, upgraded True Grit, upgraded Evolve, upgraded Dual Wield. Very nice finds so far. Especially with Hammer. Especially with Hammer. Ridiculous, quite frankly. Still missing a Disarm, though. And we have a lot less time to find it now. But we're still doing okay. Deal 14 by 4, lose Reaper in this fight. I'm going to do that. We just want to rush down Collector here. The quicker this fight is, the better. Definitely the quicker, the better. Maybe energy potion for uppercut. Uh, probably just bash fiend fire here. That's gonna proc feel no pain a bunch of times, which will proc juggernaut a bunch of times. And the idea is kill collector before any further nonsense happens. Could even think about flex pot this turn. This would be twenty-seven by six, right? Quite a bit of damage. It's 
Sounds like the flex pot might get us a kill then. Yeah, so that's 162 plus 18. I think that is a strike kill with the flex pot. Yeah. Works for me. Clicky clicky. Speed or offering? I'm feeling offering. Well, the feed does have a plus. It's going to be really hard to land that feed. Meanwhile, it's really easy to restore the health from the offering. I think I take offering here. More accelerant for the deck. Pyramid, huh? The Helix Pyramid Street continues. Pyramid makes Fiend Fire ridiculous. The other option is just more energy. Which does make the dual wield better, but the dual wield is better with Pyramid, surely. I'd rather just take one energy generating card. Yeah, let's take Pyramid here. At the end of our turn, we no longer discard our hand. We've got lots of draw to make Pyramid good. Pommel, Battle Trance, Pommel, Pommel, Offering. Makes the Evolve a bit sad. Now we'd like to find a second wind or something similar. I guess I don't need that with uh, Fiendfire. Elite placement this act is a bit questionable. Note the very low number of elites we can fight. Only two here. I think I like going this way. <clears throat> we can maximize our... Maw bank value by not going to this shop. Just go to this one and then one in Act 4. We'll get an extra 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 12. Quite a bit of more money here. I like that. Just get the wing boots. That would improve things substantially, wouldn't it? It would. Spikers. Dinky spikers. Always presenting problems. Juggernaut kills the spiker. Hmm. Can also just kill the spiker with Reaper. We take the damage first and then the healing occurs. Although we already healed a full, so whatever. No biggie. Second wind! Didn't I just ask for that? I will take it. Exhaust everything in our hand that isn't an attack card and get block for each card. A perfect way to generate, oh, you know, a hundred block at one time, if that's what you need. <clears throat> 20 per card, you say? Sounds like a W to me. Is it going weary route? I am a big Elden Ring fan, for sure. For sure. Easiest just to get my health back after the facts. Yep. 
than Fiendfire. Are we increasingly desperate for Weaken? I think we are. A little hard to justify with Pyramid, but I'm going to take this Clothesline Plus, just to make sure we can keep the heart weak at all times. If we can't do that, we're going to have a big problem. Excuse me. Just what do you think you're doing? Is fine. No. I like a red skull activating and deactivating immediately there. That's kind of funny. Good fight. Probably not it. Don't really want another shrug, do I? I don't think so. I want to power through. Bonus Relic, or a Calcum. I'm going to skip that. So that we can take whatever's in the next chest. Or a Calcum's a good early game relic, less so in the late game. Decidedly less so. Repto, actually not that bad here. I think there's definitely worse elites to fight. It's a close line, Repto. Is Bash Fiendfire just a kill next turn? Let's see, we deal 21 times 8. Yes, that super duper kills her. What an easy fight. I think we might have even had that kill last turn. More block. This is good for heart, especially. <laughs> what? Question card. You're not supposed to betray me. Hmm. <laughs> I have to choose one. Corruption, Evolve plus, Dark Embrace plus, Shockwave. We can rule out the Evolve. Man, Corruption looks really good here. Corruption looks like a game changer, especially with Dual Wield Feel No Pain. Yeah, I want Corruption. Over Dark Embrace here. Feels bad. We're also more likely to see another Dark Embrace than we are to see uh, another Corruption. So I'll take the Corruption. The Pummel Strikes will draw for a lot. Twenty times nine is not quite enough. Although it would have been twenty-two by nine. So glad I didn't take Feed. Okay, with a Corruption, there's no such thing as too many Shrugs. We should take these now. You're not Dark Embrace. Bloodletting is good, though. Solves a, a little bit more of our energy problems here. Harder move looks good. Overall, this shop is pretty weak. How do I feel about White Beast? Not thrilled, that's for sure. Definitely not thrilled by it. I guess Ancient T set is maybe okay. Seems hard to use the energy on turn one, though. I guess I'll take it. We might be able to find a better potion. I'm hoping for an Ancient Potion. Better yet, Ancient Potion, Speed Potion together would make a huge difference. 
We get Sundial for skipping the... Oracalcum. Uh, this deck is pretty close to infinite with double pummel strike after exhausting all of the stuff. That's kind of cool as a win con. This fire is unfortunately a complete waste. Does magnetism make skills zero when corruption's in play? Yes, magnetism can make skills and those skills will be zero cost. Such as uh, chrysalis or metamorphosis, for example, or the bomb. All of those would be zero cost. Boop. Maybe clothesline was better? Doesn't matter much. You dare. Dare you. And then Fiendfire. So many fights just ended by fiend fire before they even really have a chance to get going. Oh, cute. I don't think I need another pummel strike, do I? I don't think so. Where's heavy blade though? Where's disarm though? We're out of time to find disarm, unfortunately. That part's spooky. That part is very spooky. Twisted Jarls, happy, happy to say that they finally got their first Ironclad and Silent 820 wins back to back. Well done. Well done. Get to fall. Lose a strike. Good. Better. Slightly. And another relic. Centennial Puzzle. Draw three. Okay, not great, but definitely helpful. How's it going, GFU? What does the A20H mean? It means we're playing on the highest difficulty level, Ascension 20. And we're also going for heart wins. We're going to act four. I'm trying to beat the quote unquote true final boss of the Spire, the Corrupt Heart. Him should be pretty easy. Bean fire will kill fairly early on into this fight, I believe. As long as we keep our debuffs up. D4 per card. Thirty per card, getting closer. You're dead. Cool. One boss down. Next one is the Awakened One. This one should be nice and easy, too. I think we just go infinite here. Seems like the simplest way to go about this. We can delete so many of our powers easily.
Don't even need to play Corruption. No, I want to play Corruption. They want to play Corruption. And we just delete stuff. GG, Awaken One. Sundial says we win. Might also be part of how we beat Heart. Stupid sexy sundial. Wait a minute, that's illegal. Is it though? Hmm. GG. The bird nerd is down, and we're on to act four. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all this strength up. Will Tori be enough to save us from the heart with Brimstone? That is the question. I'm not sure. Did not find a disarm here. Did not get much use out of our rest sites. But we do find Dolly's Mirror. And that might just be enough. We can mirror the Feel No Pain. We can also bottle a card, putting it in our opening hand, although I don't actually think we want to do that. Rage is here. Yes, that's a good idea. Rage is a good idea. I'm wondering about weak pot. But yeah, I think it's got to be double feel no pain, right? Surely it does. That means we can't bottle a card, but we can remove Strike. And I can add Rage Finesse. I like Finesse here. There's just a little bit more block with the Feel No Pains. What if I don't play Corruption? Hmm. Interesting thought. We'll think about that. Probably I play it, but we'll see. Okay, looking a little spooky. Drug, defend, and flame? Next turn, I'm not sure what's going to happen. We'll have our Akabeko in play. Hmm. Screw grit a burn and draw cards, I guess. Dual wield, feel no pain, feel no pain. We're guaranteed getting a potion, so I'm down to use the energy potion, too. 
So currently we get eight block, go to 35, 33. Take 11. Which is fine, actually. Just hit me. Pretty hard to lose with corruption in play to these two. Still 12 enough. 59, yes, that's perfect. Nineteen by nine. It'd be exactly one hundred and seventy-one. Are you kidding? Exactly one hundred and seventy-one. Okay. Cool. Finally, we weren't one short. That's right. At long last. to reset that. You don't mind. best potions. Dex pot. Oh my goodness, Twitch chat. We find Disarm and Dark Embrace. Once again, the question card betraying us. I think it's got to be Disarm here. Pretty sure that has to be Disarm. Although Corruption, Dark Embrace... doesn't. Fashionably late to disarm. Why not that arm? I'll take the disarm. I'll keep the block pot. We playing corruption against heart? It's going to depend on the draw order a little bit. We are actually not 100% sure. Play that. I think this waits till next turn. This might also wait because we want to know if we're going to. Dual wield it. So I think this is the start. Let's get mega debuffed. 3 by 15, more like 0 by 15. So now I can play Bash Uppercut, Bloodletting. Yeah, Bash Uppercut, Bloodletting. Start hitting it. Yeah, we can play one of these now. Run more, no, it's Iron Wave. Take zero. This is a very good start. So what does it take to get me to not play corruption in this fight? This is the sort of hand that would really do it, actually. I 
Let's go Feel No Pain. Rage Pummel. Juggernaut. Offering. Why did we disarm first cycle with Tori plus Rod? Um, to make sure that the attack was less than five. Because it could have been more than five. For example, if the multi-hit is on turn three, the heart will have three strength. Um, so it's a base of five by 15. If we're vulnerable, it'll be seven by 15 on turn three. So we have to disarm to avoid catastrophe. Also, the, the extra strength gets permanently removed either way because the heart is still in positive strength. So there's no reason not to disarm early. All right, we're going to get rid of Corruption. People were asking me if I play Corruption in this heart fight. Not with this draw order. No way. This is perfect for setting up an infinite with the rage. Oh, even with the weak from Uppercut, actually, it might have been 5 by 15 on the upper end. But again, there's still no benefit to waiting, so... Oh, well. The damage. Evolve. You shouldn't have. Fiendfire all of this? No, we got a clothesline, right? Fiendfire next turn? Yeah, clothesline, Fiendfire next turn. Stay weak, please. Five by 15, exactly. Spooky. Delete all of this? These are the only remaining cards. Except I can't delete more cards. Yes, I can. I have second wind. Is that good enough? Close to good enough. Yeah, we should trigger it first. Yes, trigger it first. Then, then we are truly good enough. That's the way to do it. And I guess I might as well play Metallicize. No reason not to. Good sign that we're capping damage here. We have the other fiend fire too, I just realized. Days long. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Actually, the infinite barely matters here. We already win for normal reasons. BG. BG. Death by block potion. Direct. GG to a shed. The streak continues. And Windstone continues to show that uh, it is a very high win rate relic indeed. GG. GG. Is that the first time I've killed with a block potion? It might be. At least for the heart. I cannot believe we found that disarm last minute. What percentage of my wins do I think are infinites? Probably close to 5%. Not very many. Um, I, I opt for infinite builds a lot less than other players do. Curious Observer. Thanks for the prime sub and the 16 months of support. Disarm didn't really do anything, given how much block the second multi-attack turn generated. 
Well, I wouldn't quite say that. We had 75 block and we were facing 5 by 15. So if we hadn't disarmed, that would have been um, 7 by 15. We would have taken 30. Well, maybe not 30. Would have been 24 or so because of Rod. So we had enough health, we could have survived it. One could one could argue that disarm was not needed here. One could argue. Let's see, up next, spire boxes or something else? Thinking something else. Yeah, I'm thinking something else here. GG. Now what, Twitch chat, has it been done? The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. GG. Ever played Hollow Knight? Oh yeah. Quite enjoyed Hollow Knight. Did the Radiance and all that too? Was good. You know, for the second half of stream today, I'm feeling like I want to break out an oldie, an oldie but a goodie, a game we haven't played in a little while. Something that ought to be fairly fun, and a game I'm sure many of you know pretty well. Couple correct guesses there in Twitch chat. See if this captures correctly. Hello? He's going into the breach. It's a trick. It's all a trick. There we go. We haven't played this uh, delightful hip combat roguelike in a long time. A blast from the past of 2012. The music's a little too loud, actually. More reasonable. <clears throat> a blast from the past of 2012. This is one of my original uh, favorite roguelites. And I'd, I'd heard a lot of folks in chat saying they'd never even seen or played this these days. We're so far removed from FTL at this point. How's it going, Logo Lepsy? First time you cut a live stream, could I explain Giant Head's slow mechanic to you? It's a little bit like Vulnerable. 10% more damage just from attacks for each card you play that turn. And it's multiplicative with real vulnerable. So, for example, if the giant head has five stacks of slow and you play an attack that does 10 damage, then it would do 15 damage. If the giant head had vulnerable instead of five stacks of slow, it would still do 15 damage. But if it had five slow and five vulnerable, it would be 10 times 1.5 times 1.5 equals 22 and a half. You do 22 damage with both vuln and five slow. So it's a multiplier with uh, with Vuln for all your attacks. Basically, it rewards decks that can play lots of attacks or lots of cards in one turn. Often, Silent Shiv decks work really well for this reason. But um, other combo-oriented or infinite decks can do quite well. Did I ever try the Multiverse mod? I did. Yeah, I, I rather liked Multiverse. It seems like it adds a lot of cool things to... FTL, but it also made a lot of its content uh, kind of in the same way that normal FTL does. Some of the content is locked behind RNG gates, essentially. You have to find the right sectors in the right order to do the quests of this game. 
and that can be really frustrating trying to grind them because the game can just not offer you the chance to do the one thing that you're trying to get the achievement for. For example, if you've tried to do the Crystal Sector, the OG way in the vanilla game, um, basically with Multiverse Edition, imagine if there was 20 different Crystal Sector quests in the game. I guess your odds of finding one of them are higher, but yikes. That's why with uh, FTL Advance Edition, they added new ways to unlock the ship. So I think you can still unlock the crystal ship um, without actually having to go to the crystal sector. Or at the minimum, there's the Rock Sea, which starts with a crystal crew and therefore makes it much, much easier to do. So you can skip most of the steps. Hawk, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. So we're going to play a cozy run of FTL. I think I'll just do a random ship run. However, before that happens, it's going to be break time. Twitch chat. Going to refill the legs, stretch the water. Back in a few minutes, and we'll play some FTL. Faster than light. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back, and the wait is over. Yes, that is a, a, a attempt at a dad joke in the title there. This dad? Yeah. Whether it's funny or not is up to interpretation. All right, we're going to roll a random ship. I set up a prediction for whether we get an A, B, or C variant ship. There are slightly more A and B variants than C variants, as there's no type C of either the Lania ship or the Crystal ship. Ninja Oriole. Thanks for the uh, 12 months and the Tier 2 sub. Is this game like Cobalt Core? Visually and thematically, quite a bit. Uh, the core is the same. You're doing one-on-one -on -one ship content combat. You've got shields and hull and all that. But uh, FTL is about locational damage. You're trying to disable enemy systems to weaken them so that you can take down their ship. It's uh, a, a lot more involved ship-to-ship uh, -ship combat. Yeah, more, more easy to say that Cobalt Core is like FTL. Definitely a little bit inspired by it. All right, what's our random ship? It's the Carnelian. That is the Crystal Bee. And one of the better, oh yeah, one of the better ships by far with the boarding crew. Let's pay out to the B Leavers. Everyone chose C, interesting. How long of a game are you in for? I think a run of FTL is usually in the two-ish hour range, although they could be faster, depending on how the player plays. Definitely a longer uh, roguelite, for sure. Gonna be playing on hard mode. We get lower scrap awards and harder enemies. That said, this is one of the strongest ships in the game. Uh, although note that we have no weapons. The ship has no guns to start. Instead, you're given a three-man crew of crystals, ancient ancestors of the Rockmen, who have a very powerful crystal lockdown ability. And we have stealth for defense, but weapons? Those we don't have. Happy to give an overall introduction to FTL for viewers who may have never seen this game before. In this game, we control a starship... In this case, the Crystal B here with its crew of individuals. Um, and our goal is to jump through eight sectors. This is the map of Sector 1. Jump through eight specter sectors, visiting beacons, fighting enemies along the way, and evading the Rebel fleet, which will appear in red on the map. We have to stay away from them. Uh, let's see. Let's look at our interface. We've got our health bar, our hull up here. Anytime the ship takes damage without the shields up, the hull will deplete. Shield is listed here below. We start with one bubble of shield. That means it'll block one point of damage before having to recharge, which takes only a few seconds. We have three, uh, four main resources beyond hull, of course. Scrap, the big one here with the gear. Scrap we get from basically every encounter, and it's used to upgrade our ship on this screen here, where we can upgrade all of the various systems that we have. Um, there's also fuel. We need fuel to make jumps. Every time we move in a sector, that's one jump. Missiles are used to fire missile weapons. And drones are used to power drones. You need drone parts to... You need special equipment to use certain items, basically. Uh, we have a bunch of little subsystems here on this ship. In order from left to right, shields. All of these systems could be powered up or powered down, and juggling where the power goes in your ship is one of the little mini-games in FTL. So, shields blocks incoming hits. Engines gives us a chance to dodge hits. Starts at only 10%, but it can go up with more investment. Med bay, located just below our teleporter here. This heals anyone who's inside. Oxygen, very important. Your crew need to breathe to be alive. 
Um, if the oxygen is not present in a room, such as if, for example, the doors are open to space, then a room that has no O2 will be indicated by these um, horizontal or diagonal uh, stripes, rather. With the doors closed, the O2 system will slowly refill. Crystal crew are resistant to, but not immune to, suffocation. The teleporter. This is going to be quite important. This is how we get our crew onto the enemy ship to attack them. And then lastly, cloaking allows us to make our ship invisible for a few seconds. While we're invisible, we have a huge boost to our evasion. And enemy weapons cannot charge. It's pretty good. Do we have any way to bypass Zoltan shields? Not right now, not here at the start. We'll have to find some way to deal with those before the end game, of course, as the final boss does have such a thing. So we make our first jump into an empty sector and we encounter our first enemy. There'll be many enemies like this. A forward scout of the rebel fleet. They decide to power up their FTL, huh? And they've got a beam drone, scary. I think this will be resolved fastest by just having all three of my crew teleport onto the enemy ship. There are two ways to win combats in FTL. Either you reduce the enemy hull to zero with your weapons, which we have none of, so we can't do that. Or we kill all of their crew members by boarding or other means, uh, resulting in the ship being empty. Killing via boarding usually gives better rewards, slightly better. We're going to teleport all three of our crew into the shields room, the central room here, where they can engage in combat with the foes. We'll cloak to dodge that laser shot, and our tanky crystal crew should win the, the matchup here. Their ship goes silent and we're relieved to know that we are still one step ahead of the fleet. So we get one missile, one drone part, and 17 juicy scrap. Then it's time for a brief stint in the med bay to heal everyone back up. And we'll need to fix the sensor room, that's what got damaged here. Is this game turn-based or pseudo-real-time? It is pseudo-real-time, although you may pause the action at any time and issue commands. Is there a reason to board shields when we had no weapons? Yes. Uh, the, the reason I did that particular room was because it was the only room on the enemy ship with more than two slots. I just wanted one room that all three of my crew could fit into. Distress beacons. Not sure we can actually deal with a distress beacon. I'm gonna avoid the distress beacons. Ever buy autopilot early on this ship? It could be worth it. Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Take damage if we try to explore it, but we'll explore it here. Unlike roguelites in the post-Spire uh, world, FTL doesn't really tell you what the options for each event do. You have to either look them up on the wiki or via trial and error kind of figure it out. But basically, top option is chance for good, chance for bad. Bottom option is just leave. But yeah, there's not a lot of transparency in the decision-making in FTL. We find four missiles and 14 scrap. That's pretty good. Normally, I recommend your first 50 scrap go to shields upgrade. Probably what I'll do here, although we could think about upgrading cloaking. Cloaking upgrade is very good. Let's upgrade cloaking. That way we can remain stealth for a bit longer. As long as you learn to fear giant, giant alien spiders, you're in a good place. 
Scans show a remote settlement being blockaded by a pirate ship. Cool, I'd love to fight them, except... The ship has a Zoltan shield. That's this green bubble around it, indicated by this green bar. Zoltan shield prevents anything from teleporting through it, so our teleporter is useless here. Meaning we'll have to rely on our backup weapons. Oh wait, we don't have any backup weapons. That means we have to ignore them, because we simply cannot even hurt them. Ignore them. That's a shame, because it would be pretty rewarding if we could take out the pirate and save the civilians here. Oh well. That's just how it is with the Crystal Bee. Greetings! Our supply of mining explosives have run out ever since the Rebels blockaded the system. Do you have any extra explosives? I do. Would you like some five missiles? They thank you and offer to have their engineers upgrade our reactor. We get plus one reactor power. That's 20 scrap of value. That's pretty good. Can't even insult them. Here we go, a ship we can actually kill. Finally, after months of waiting, someone has fallen into our trap. They've got a missile and a relatively spooky drone. This is what the cloak is for. I'm gonna board into the drone room again because it's the biggest room. Three to be in the same room, right? Well, this is tough. We got uh, mantises and rockmen, which means we cannot kill them in one uh, one trip here. We'll have to teleport back onto our ship. This is Kirby. That didn't work. Uh oh. I think we're going to lose Kirby here. Yeah, Kirby's dead. That backfired. Hmm. That was not good. Not the worst thing in the world to lose a crew early, but it's definitely not ideal here with a boarding ship like this. It was my mistake boarding an enemy ship where I didn't know what the crew were. And uh, not using my crystal lockdown quickly enough. But we live and learn. Hey. And ex we get a crew member. Maxim joins the crew, so that's not so bad. But yes, Crystal Crew in particular are very hard to replace. That's all right. Call it uh, a little bit of de-rusting, if you will. small rebel ship nearby that has been refitted for transport rather than combat. This is a great event to find. This event will put us in combat with a ship that's trying to flee. If you kill the crew of the enemy ship before it gets away, then you get some kind of bonus reward. Let's lock things down a bit here. Generally, enemy ships will defend themselves with against borders, so the pilot often leaves the cockpit, and that means they won't charge their FTL to flee. 
ship was apparently carrying information about the surrounding beacons. We're able to download the map of the sector. Scrap the rest. Not too bad. <clears throat> Not too bad. And the enemy ship always prioritizes defending the shield room. That's right. It's definitely some... Prioritization to their... The enemy targeting of their weapon attacks as well as their defense. But I don't know it all off the top of my head. It's been so long. It's been a long time. Okay, so we want to visit nodes that say there might be a ship there. Because that's going to be in fights. Fights means scrap. Scrap means good. An automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. Auto scouts are hard to deal with here. We mostly can't deal with this. There's no crew on board this thing. I could try to kill it with Crystal Vengeance or something, but I don't think it's worth it. We'll steer clear. Yeah, the, those automated ships have no oxygen in them, so if you try to board them, you're going to be boarding into... Instant asphyxiation. This one we can at least take. And they've got a teleporter too, so let's wait for them to come to us. Right into the med bay. What a fool. I'd like to desync those uh, weapons. So I'm going to board into the weapons room and use the crystal vengeance here. To lock down, rather. There we go. Once the weapons are t down, it's a lot easier to take out the ship, usually. fuel, one drone part, 21 scrap. And the outpost hails us, giving us another two fuel, 18 scrap. Perfect. I'm going to take shields two. Do shields two. Two layers of shields is a lot harder for early game enemy ships to punch through with their weapons, so unless they're sporting missiles, this can often mean total safety. Does this ship type support cloning? You have to buy the clone bay, which replaces the med bay. But you can, yeah. I think every ship can have a clone bay. Slavers? Attack the scum. Actually, no, just board straight into weapons. Lockdown. Ah, oh, double frickin' mantis again. I'm locked in combat with them again. Probably gotta level up the sensors. Is this gonna get somebody killed again? Maybe. Hmm. Not sure if they both die here. I think they can escape. Yeah, they can escape. We're good, we're good. We just have to run. And they have a med bay too, which is a slight issue. Um, so we have uh, our work cut out for us here. I think we're going to get hit by a few missiles. Crystal Vengeance! Almost took out the med bay. That would have been nice. I think we have to board... Speaking of medbay, I think we have to board into their medbay. To take it out. Okay. 
good. Hmm. <clears throat> The fight. Back to the mid bay. Took quite a few missiles, but uh, we do get some fuel, some scrap, and some missiles. That was tough. You usually get a crew from slavers. We didn't this time. All right. When do we get a weapon? Potentially never. We could actually go the entire run with no weapon. That's right. Missiles are overpowered when the enemy has them, underpowered when you have them. Good description. Guess we just flee from this. Could stick around and have our uh, pilot level up their evasion. That can take a long time, though. Don't particularly enjoy trying to uh, train skills in this game. Although I'll take whatever I get before I can leave. Nice. Get a little bit of experience every time it misses. What's wrong with this fight? Well, the enemy ship has no crew. This is an AI ship. Um, and because it's an AI ship, it's also got no oxygen on board. So sending our people onto that enemy ship is not going to work out too well for them. And unfortunately, that's actually our only mode of attack. So we're leaving. We'll go to Sector 2. Not a very good Sector 1. We had to flee from a couple of fights. That's all right. Rebel-controlled sectors could have more AI ships. Mantis-controlled are a little bit tough because Mantis are good at melee combat, but I ain't afraid of no Mantis. At least if I can see them coming. Upgrade our sensors. That's going to let us actually see what kind of crew the enemy ship has. And that can make it a lot easier for us to win. Hmm. An escape pod containing a mantis. If we jettison the pod, nothing happens. If we pry it open, we might get a mantis, but the mantis might also kill someone. So, could lose one crew, could gain one crew. We're not really able to risk a losing, so I'm going to jettison it. You're not stupid. Stress? I have something we can do. Hello, we used our last fuel to jump to this station. We're not exactly rich with fuel, but I'll give you something. You give us a map. That is good, I think. Yeah, it helps us avoid an asteroid field, for example. This exit beacon sucks. 
We're not stupid. A distress signal coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. This is one of the events that we can handle. I believe level 2 cloaking allows us to help here. A lot of events in FTL faster than light. Um, certain systems or crew members can give you blue options. Blue options have a better than normal chance to give rewards to the player, usually. There are a few cases where the blue option is the worst option, but very rarely. Close enough. Use your ship's cloaking to prevent the defense system from getting a lock. Once closer, you hasten to disable the system without damaging it. It was a sloppy job, but they appreciate it. But yeah, simply fire on the defense system. With our, um, crystal vengeance? Maybe? Maybe. There aren't so many parts of Manta space that aren't dotted by the wrecks of battles past, but this is one of them. Go here? Yeah, here, 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 and then maybe swing by the exit beacon? Oh, this connects to the exit? That's good. Just throw a human at him. Small military outpost with a few freighters nearby. This looks very manageable. The Mantis are going to come to us, which makes it easy to kill them. Uh, fun fact, you can control where borders are on your ship by deoxygenating other parts of your ship. So we can force them into the med bay. <clears throat> Typically, the AI will recall their crew member when they get low on health, but they can't recall crew from a cloaked ship. So we just cloak, and then they're trapped here. <clears throat> yeah, now we shut the doors, too. Can't just hide in the med bay, fool. Also, I could just trap you in here. Preventing enemy crew from leaving to the med bay can be very good. We get 1 1 21. Definitely low on fuel, but that's what the shop is for. Try to save money for that shop. <clears throat> Are there time or dexterity components to this game? Only if you play no pause. Normally you can pause at any time and issue orders. Get your bear bearings, and I recommend pausing often if you're learning this game. Hey, another refitted ship. Cool. Hmm. Should be easy enough to take this one down. going to charge the FTL again. Hopefully they don't get away while I'm rearming here. Let's see. 
Are we good? <clears throat> Again, information. No actual loot. We already had the information, too. Dang it. Useless. This has definitely been a bad start. Better Paul TT says, I'm terrible at this game. Any beginner tips? I like to level up shields as my first 50 scrap investments. I recommend targeting your attacks on the enemy weapon system when you're first starting out. Try to shut down their incoming damage so you can just pummel them. If you're having a hard time hitting the enemy ship, then try shooting their cockpit or their engines to make them easier to hit. Great. And it's trying to flee. So we just want to flee before it does, basically. Hacking is OP is good uh, beginner advice, too. Hack system is very, very strong. You can do a lot of hot nonsense with hacking. Okay, pilot leveled up. At least we get a bit more evade now. Oh, God. What a bad start. So, the scout jumps away and informs the rebel fleet of where we are, doubling the rebel pursuit for one turn. Hmm. We're also going to be out of fuel very soon. Seems like less of a problem, actually. This is an easy ship, at least. fuel. And I guess we're going to the store next. Hopefully the store has something good. Clone Bay would be a, a pretty big deal, as would any weapon that we could use. Be all beam weapons. Could be. Let's see. Drone control. Defense drone is kind of cool. Yeah, it is beam weapons. <laughs> uh. I guess this missile takes three power. We could use the missile launcher. Overall, this shop ain't it. I will sell our Crystal Vengeance for 40 scrap. That's a really good thing the ship has to start. We also gotta buy some fuel here. 
I don't usually like to repair to full because there are events that can heal you. I think I'd rather have Pegasus than Halberd Beam. I'll buy that. We'll have to invest a lot of, in weapons. Um, this starts with a weak weapon system, so we have to pay 40, then 25 scrap to level it up. The problem for future us. Time to leave. For your schematic samples, be sure to visit our new military-grade drone store opening in Sector XR1-45. We get 10 scrap and a whole repair drone. One of the awesomest drones in the game. And we can check out the Zoltan homeworlds, except I can't deal with Zoltan ships very well. So I don't really want to do that. That said, there is an awesome quest we can find in the Zoltan homeworlds. In a rock-controlled sector, we're likely to run into enemies who have missiles. Just saying Halberd would have been good? Yeah, maybe. Lith, thanks for the Prime sub and the 19 months. All these months watching and you still can't beat this game. It's fun to watch, though. Tough game, FTL. To try the homeworlds here. I'll have to level up the weapons fast if possible. Could have bought more fuel. Well, that ain't it. I have to level up the engines too. Ugh. Oh, garbage. Oh no. Oh no. What? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Wow. What a garbage run this was. Very unlucky run. Normally this is the easiest ship in the game, but we got dumpstered. Dang. GG, I guess. GG, a short run for us. Dang. Just way too many auto ships with the with the crystal bee. Tough stuff. Tough stuff. Another random ship? Yeah. Yeah. The Man of War. This is a weird one. We start with the anti-bio beam, the breach bomb, and dual lasers. Kind of intended to get crew kills without actually boarding the enemy ship. We also start with two slug crew members who are telepathic. They can see the location of enemy crew on board. Did I want AE content off? No. Why would I ever want AE content off? Oh, it's disabled? What? How did that happen? What? Let's fix that. Oops. There we go. Was it disabled last run? Maybe that's why we lost. That's right, this ship has no sensors, meaning we can't see our own stuff, which is definitely a little awkward. Thanks for the map. You stupid people giving me maps all the time. For a small fee, they'll let us continue on our way, huh? Ion plus beam weapon is kind of scary, actually. 
remember if the anti-bio beam damages Zoltan's shields or not. is on fire. This is already going badly. <laughs> We're getting eviscerated here. I believe that didn't hit weapons. That hit weapons, though. Oh, garbage. Should just breach bomb them at the beginning. Ugh. No more life signs remaining on the enemy ship. Okay, we took, I think, eight hole damage for that. That's pretty bad, but typical before you get your shield upgrade that you take a bunch of damage in the opening fights. I can win this time, thank goodness. Feels nice. Drones, we've got a gun. And not enough crew. 15 scrap, and on the station, there's a Pegasus missile. Okay, so we get the Pegasus missiles back. That's pretty cool. We can even use them right away if we need to. And again. Oh, this is a nasty event. Your arrival is greeted by numerous computer alerts. The nearby scout has used a satellite to deploy a virus to disrupt our shield system. So we just have straight up no shields, and they have a burst too, because screw us, apparently. Uh, yikes. Breach bomb will not arm fast enough to stop that, bre that burst two from firing. Actually, yes, it will. I lied. All right, we're good. Never mind. Should have been on weapons, though. Ow. My weapons. If we can hit the weapon system on them one more time, we'll be completely safe here. They're teleporting bombs through our shields. Bombs deal system damage, but not hull damage. So we're not taking hull damage. But it's still hurting us, kind of. Missing is a port of life in FTL. Auto ships in general have a really good dodge chance. Come on. Our other weapons all require resource to fire or aren't useful like the anti-bio beam. So there's no point there. 
Now we take out the evasion. It'll be a lot easier to kill once... Actually, like, aim for the shields. There we go. Okay, not too bad. A little bit slow, but that's how FTL is sometimes. Sometimes it just takes a while. We get some stuff. Uh, we could go to a shop right away. I think I'm just going to level up shields twice. Perfectly good starting weapons. Another auto ship. Charging FTL. We're going to use the breach bombs here. If we can hit the cockpit with a breach bomb, it won't be able to flee. Got a nice cloak on it, though. Okay, first try. Well, that's only orange piloting, so I have to follow that up. There we go. Okay, now it can't leave. Too. Okay, that's the last of the damage. playing no pause? I'm not, but I, I am pausing a small amount. All right, we managed to dispatch it before it fled. Definitely a root ship uh, layout. You're my son? No way. Never talk to me or my son ever again. That's a tough fight. It's, um, scrap gun. If I'm willing to use the anti-bio beam, I think we can do this. Wait. But I gotta make a beach breach. Excuse me, in the uh, weapons room here. Missed. Stupid evasion. Thank you. I've got a mantis trying to fix this thing. That's not going to work out so well. Hey. Guns are dumb. With the crew dead, we're able to take the fuel out of storage. Fixer O2. to recover a bit before we jump. Should level up the reactor. What good fortune that we happen to run into each other. Nothing personal, but you have some information we need. 
This is single shot lasers. That's not too bad. Okay, we should be immune to this thing. What is the slug's penalty? Slugs have no penalty. They're all upside, no downside. Penalty is you're a slug. Tough life. Although do note that humans have the advantage of slightly faster skill leveling, so there's still an advantage to being a human over being a slug. Get an Ion Blast, that's not too bad. Ion Blast can help us get through tougher shields here. This will go Breach, Ion Blast, Anti-Bio Beam. Stacking ion weapons could be a really cool way to deal with enemy shields. Intruders on board, huh? Oops. Please come into my midbay. We do start with upgraded doors, which is definitely nice for fire control and border control. Let that O2 refill a bit. I think I'm going to jump to this asteroid location. Grab more power before I do that. the way the shields look in this game. That nice hexagonal grid. Very cool. QTP Wolf had an NG ship run with all ion guns. You would kill the shields and then they're O2. I like that. Asphyxiate. And they have a fire drone. That's kind of spooky. Looks like we can anti-bio beam this ship pretty easily overall. there. That's close. Human has fled the fire because they're too low on health to put it out. Get a heavy ion. The more ion weapons you have, the more effective they are together. So that's kind of cool. Don't 
think I'm going to equip it at the moment, but I like that we have it. Jump here, then here. My doors are broken. Investigate. I had a small cache of supplies that were surely left for any loyal Federation ships in trouble. Yeah, double ion bio beam is kind of cool. We're not ready to make that work just yet, but I like the idea. We would like more evasion. Leveling up engines is one of the easiest early defense upgrades you can get. Strongly recommend. After the first shields upgrade, getting some engines. The engines will protect you from missiles, for example. And a ion blast this thing again. Or breach bomb it? Yeah, I'm going to breach bomb this thing again. Breach bomb the weapons. I don't want to get hit by missiles here. Yeah, two damage missiles. Ouch. Okay, good. That took out the missile launcher permanently. So we don't need to breach bomb it again. Stop. It's very hard in FTL to avoid all the incoming damage. It is uh, definitely a game where you get chipped down and have to repair a lot. Some ships are better at others than others at avoiding damage, but almost every ship can take unavoidable damage in the first few jumps. And there's not much that you can uh, do. Okay, what have we stumbled into here? Good anti-bio beam situation. Just ion blast bio beam sounds good. Missile launcher though. No, we gotta take out their missiles, surely. You know what? Screw it. Gotta kill this ship. Close to losing that one. Let's get the heck out of here. All in all, not a bad Sector 1. We did lose most of our hull, but we have enough scrap to repair it if we can find a shop. Looks like we're going into an uncharted nebula, whether we want to or not. Let's take the bottom route. Nebula rich sector. Might be able to get some light years on the fleet, but it's only useful if we make it out the other side. No choice for the first jump, we just have to go. Fix the doors.
Intruders, four humans. Life's a lot easier when you fight in the med bay. Does slug detection work in the nebula? Yes. The nebula is where slugs live natively. So their abilities are useful here. More like dead bay. And then if we want to find a shop, we just want to look at as many beacons adjacent to other beacons as possible, really. Once you're adjacent to a shop, you can see that it's a shop. This is a dead end, though. We're not going here. Attack! You get disoriented in the nebula, and you lose your bearings completely. Bummer can't fight them. Interesting that we don't have a blue option for slugs here. Curious. And we jumped into an ion storm. Manually searching could result in losing a crew. We already don't have enough crew to spare, so we're going to avoid the risk here. There's a shop. They sell my slug repair gel. Propose a mutually beneficial exchange of properties. We've got scrap recovery arm. Um, automated reloader is actually quite good here. 10% cooldown between weapon shots. Matters a lot with stuff like ion weapons. Could buy sensors. Also, the heavy ion kind of sucks. I'm going to sell it. Let's get the reloader. The auto loader. And I'm going to keep the Pegasus in the back pocket for now. I like what it offers us. Okay, feeling a bit more capable now. What does a clone bay do? A clone bay allows us to revive dead crew members rather than healing them with a med bay. The clone bay is a med bay replacement. Dodge. Oh yeah, the other thing that slugs have is that they're immune to mind control, which is a system type. That this enemy ship has. It would be mind controlling our crew right now if it weren't for the fact that there are only slugs here. Alright, we got stuff. Gotta love stuff. There won't be a next time. Open fire! Okay, they have a clone bay. You'd be able to get a crew kill here, though. Yeah, you're welcome in the med bay.
Clone Bay also activates the medical airlock. That's right, you can heal people by killing them. NG boarding crew, go! No crew to stop us. We install their weapon system on our own ship, picking up a halberd beam. That's a powerful weapon. That's a really powerful weapon. Gonna keep that in storage for a minute, but uh, we're probably gonna transition to that soon. Halberd beam, one of my favorites personally, weapon-wise. Does good things, doesn't afford anything. One of the big three. Up there with the burst two. And the flak one, presumably. Smuggler trying to stay away from beacons. If we can get a crew kill here, we might be able to get some good loot. They have a pretty weak ship overall. Vulcan can be pretty good, too. Vulcan's hilarious. Whoops. What do you mean I missed? Don't be absurd. more consistently with the engine crew gone here. Just one more beam and they're gone. Excellent. We get a stun bomb, which can stun enemy crew for a long time. Yet another missile weapon here. Probably want to get to a shop and sell some of this. These don't connect. Bummer. Yeah, so many free weapons compared to last run, right? I see your missile launcher. You can try to buy an unknown weapon. You can also get scammed by them. I'll just pick a fight here. Although, uh, missiles do be a little scary here. So let's go ahead and use the breach bomb. No. To breach here. Oh well. <laughs> they hit their own guy. Good job. Pick a fight with that nerd. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. 
They're going nowhere. Oops. There we go. Not too bad. Time to go. Go to a rebel controlled sector? Why not? No shop, huh? Okay, I think it is time that we equip the halberd beam. Go ion blast, halberd beam, breach bomb, anti bio beam. Ion Blast Halberd Beam should be pretty good. Oh, here. What does the Halberd Beam do? It's a very powerful damage weapon. Uh, I can show you what it does in this fight, in fact. Basically, you drag the beam across multiple rooms of the enemy ship, and it hits each room for damage. Uh, beams also cannot be avoided, so when you fire them, it's pretty devastating, especially if the enemy ship has no shields. Like that one. All right, to the shop. I'm loaded with weapons I want to sell. We've got tons of stuff I don't need. Doubt they would turn away business. Little distraction boys get an extra jump each sector is kind of cool. Reverse ion field can be pretty good. I think I need any of this, not even the new crew. crew. What's the strap behind not healing to full? Basically to allow us to take advantage of healing events. It's kind of spooky. Okay, uh, and I sold the repair gel. That's fine. Please stop missing. Oh my god. Mess. There we go, we finally hit it. There's a freaking fire in the... oh boy. Arg. We're in an asteroid field with no shields now. Actually, no, we fixed the shields. Okay, all's well, all's well. Hit him. Okay, situation under control. Quote, unquote. Well. My ship is on fire. Through you, buddy. Oh, 
Oh, two is off? Yeah, I turn it off to put out the fires. There we go. Control has been reestablished. Can definitely end up in some tough situations with the right combination of uh, damage and fires on your ship. Especially with limited crew, it's tough. Okay. Can now leave. Intruder is on board. A flushed and panicky rebel soldier is teleported aboard. This rebel who appears unarmed repeatedly declares his peaceful intentions. Seems the rebel life has lost its charm. This one's kind of fun. You either trust him or you don't. And no matter which one you choose, there's a chance that uh, you pick the wrong option, basically. If we accept his proposal, we have a chance to gain a crew member. If we re reject his offer, we have, a, I think, a chance to gain a bounty or something. Let's accept his offer. Rebel makes a take as a assigned station, then suddenly turns and eviscerates the nearest crew member. Red alert. Pippaluck is gone. I didn't realize you could lose crew to this one, too. I thought it was just damage. So, we're down to one crew. That's pretty tough. My weapons are hacked. That's not good. That is, in fact, kind of bad. Thankfully, the enemy ship is not very dangerous. Oh, they have a defense drone Mark II also? Yikes. Are we dead? No, we're... Something closer to a soft lock. <laughs> is what we are. We are unable to hurt them. They're unable to hurt us. Um, how do I? I have to breach bomb this thing. That's the easy way to do this. Breach bomb into the shields. We'll win. This is a really nasty ship layout. And if they dodge our bombs repeatedly, then we can't do anything. Oh, what? They have buffer points and shields? Uh Garbage. I can't... Okay, I have to flee. Great. I can, literally can't hurt it. Annoying. We can train evasion, yes. Do you think of training evasion is worth wasting the time of 1,000 people? I don't. I don't like training in this game. It's, it's not worth the time. Defend the outpost. Uh, we could just use the ion blast here, actually. Of course, then we find out... No, uh, Ion can't have buffer points. There we go. 
carve that ship a new one. Can you dodge a single shot, please? game get harder? Game was never hard. Simply merciless. for a slow repair process. Buffer point and weapons might be a good idea. for that juicy repair level up. Oh yeah. meet the shop now would we buy a crew i'm not sure we are allowed to probably we would though one crew is really bad yeah, i think it's time to give up the anti-bio beam strat here okay Functionality restored. Wait, was a breach. Fix it. We'll just do a quick check for other breaches, too. civilian ship. Okay, this is much better.
How many hours do I have in FTL? I think about 500. Quite a few. Contact the civilians. They offer to give us fire bombs. Cool. Thanks for the fire bomb. Okay, now we can have the dual lasers active also. It's a bit deadlier. A bit more offense goes a long way. Have I tried note pause? Not much. much. Big missile launcher. Wondering if maybe reach bomb is merited here. I'll try without it. Missile launcher, that's quite bad. Four damage to the shields. Ow. Die, though. Simply on the verge of dying. Totally different things. Very lonely slug does their best. Engines are the thing most likely to keep me alive, I think. For just a little bit longer. More evasion chance, more uh, fleeing speed. Well, I can't attack the slaver scum because they have a missile that one-shots us, so I guess I have to ignore them. Okay, bye. Sure would have been nice to get a crew there, but... Uh, death. Alright, I'm gonna risk it. If this kills me, it's fine. So it ends. <laughs> it's not even Saturday, but it is Death Day. GG. GG. I guess uh, space ain't it for us. Two very tough runs of FTL, that's for sure. Well, Twitch chat, I think I'm gonna get out of here. Call it a day. Yeah, some anti-streamer luck. At least the spire was nice. See you later, Vobaplo. Uh, eat Tito, Two Perts, Clamzy, Black Love of the Cat, Metafusion, Real Dotton, The Sheep That Could, Luigi Head, The Evangelion, Jackstonian, and everybody else. Thank you so, so much for watching. Going to be back tomorrow with our community-voted game this month, Dungeon of the Endless. Should be pretty cool. Maybe some puzzles or, a uh, heck, maybe more FTL tomorrow. I don't know. Either way, GG's and good night to one and all. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And until next time, my friends, stay cozy. Toodaloo.